Welcome. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Monday, June 27, 2022. I'm Select Board Chair Leonard Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Hahn? Yes. John Hurd? Yes. Steve DeCourcy? Yes. Eric Helmes? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Doug Heim? Yes. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with an act signed into law on February 15, 2022 that extends certain COVID-19 measures. The act includes an extension until July 15, 2022 of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is on the town's website in reference with agenda materials for this meeting, allow public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as there is reasonable public access that allows the public to follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, it is being recorded, it is being recorded and it's also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching the ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the website using the notice agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's set forth on tonight's agenda. I'll now turn to the next item on the agenda, which is the endorsement of appropriation of excess of access and deficiency funds for Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District. Mr. Heim. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, this request is a fairly straightforward one. We've received these uh, several times in the last couple of years. Um, so I wouldn't say it's every year, but it's a fairly standard practice. Uh, Minuteman has uh, an excess uh, after closing out the fiscal year, and they'd like to roll that into their capital stabilization fund, which is largely a benefit to all communities, because as a member of the Minuteman Agreement, we all are responsible, the member communities are responsible for capital expenditures. This is basically taking operating, putting into capital. Uh, I think Superintendent Wilkillen was, just so folks at home know, uh, happy to come talk about it, but it's, it's again, a fairly uh, straightforward practice, and uh, unless the board has any questions, um, we're just basically looking for a motion to approve the um, uh, appropriation of the excess and deficiency funds into the capital stabilization fund. Thank you. Mr. Third. Move approval. Second with a question. Yeah, Ms. Vaughn. Um, am, am I correct, um, either Attorney Heim or Mr. DeCourcy, of the 1.4, about 500,000 is from Arlington's pot or the 1.4 is what the the excess is declared to be. That's from all the member. That 1.4 is a compilation of all the member communities. And my question is: Is Arlington's contribution or share of that approximately 500,000? So uh, my understanding from again, Mr. Pooler, the manager's memo is that um, the endorsement recommendation before us is for the $500,000, the excess and efficiency. Um, I don't. I'm not quite familiar enough to know exactly where the other funds referenced by Minuteman are coming from. I'm assuming that's correct, Mrs. Mahan, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if Mr. DeCourcy has better information on that. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so the 1.4, if, if this was the operating budget and you were um, making an appropriation, we would be between like 30 and 33% of the annual budget. Um, I'm not sure because of over time the, the excess and deficiency is a historical amount that goes back many years so they don't necessarily trace it to each individual um, community but the 500,000 that is coming out again if it was an appropriation we'd be about a third of it okay and does anyone remember historically when the last time this particular scenario played itself out. The reason I say that is we, we're going to have to start to, in 23 or 24, um, <clears throat> demonstrate to the voters, regardless of how they feel, um, about an override. And um, we're going to have to explain that we've looked under, you know, every mattress, every pillow, every everything. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with this appropriation, but um, 
I know it, it said it's been done before, but this is the first time I can recall um, having an overage or this particular designation of money, which is being asked to go into capital planning projects, which is fine this one time, I guess. But, um, you know, as we move forward, where we're going to have to start to buckle down. Um, so when was, I don't remember, do you remember the last time this happened? I don't ever remember doing this before. Okay. And where they have a brand new school, um, and I understand, and, and I don't want to rock the boat. I'm fine with, you know, um, I guess, actually I'd be guided by Mr. DeCourcy, but um, I guess I would say um, if this came up again next year, I think I would like to look at it a little more um, studiously in terms of um, whether it's something that we need to do again. Um, you know, I'm fine with mm -hmm. this initial. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, if so, I may, so Mr. Chair. I mean, this is like taking money out of free cash from, from the town. So in theory, by taking the amount out of the excess and deficiency fund, that is lessening our burden because otherwise it would come out as part of our annual assessment. So I'm not sure they did this that much in the past because I'm not sure how robust the excess and deficiency fund was over the years. But I think it's appropriate to ask um, if it does it does come again. The, the other question would be could, be, could they be using the funds for a different purpose that, that um, you might be more appropriate. But I think for this year, knowing that they want to improve the playing fields there, knowing that they have this amount certified and they'll lose that certification on June 30th. Um, I'm comfortable with it, but I, I agree with the, the follow-up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think I seconded. Yeah, okay. Mr. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Helmet. Just a, a follow-on question to that. Um, does this, are they not able to use this uh, surplus for uh, operating expenses in, in a way that would also reduce our obligation. Okay. So technically what they're doing here is, is they're amending their fiscal 22 budget to take $500,000 and, and increase the contribution to their capital stabilization fund. So everything else is already paid for through the approval of the budget. And again, because it happened in this fiscal year, they just voted this a week ago and they have to go to the member communities and have them endorse this within seven days. So it's, there's no need within their budget for fiscal 22 for any other purpose. Thank you. And it just so happened that we conveniently had a meeting within that amount of time. <laughs> so, 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 um, so yes, um, Mr. Heim. Mr. Chair, if I may, I just want to um, clarify and correct one thing. So one, one reason that there may be a slight difference here is that, and I'm sorry I didn't raise this earlier, is that uh, as folks will recall, our members will recall we did amend the agreement so i don't recall how excess was handled before we amended the minimum regional agreement part of what the purpose of that amendment was 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 to provide communities with greater voice in terms of how certain uh, expenditures and responsibilities were handled so i think that's germane to your point mrs mahan um and then i'm sorry i think mr de said this but i, I did want to clarify that I, I do believe that five hundred thousand is a total of what they're seeking not five hundred thousand dollars from arlington are we on the same page, Mr. Christie? So I'm sorry, I misspoke about that. That's my fault. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I think we're all set here. So on a motion to endorse the appropriation of excess and efficiency funds for Minutemen Regional Vacational, Regional Vocational Technical School District by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's so unanimous vote. Thank you. So on to the third item on the agenda, reopening a Native American gallery event at Whittemore Park. And do we have um, Jerry Tremley here? Yes, she's being promoted. Okay. Am I visible? Nope. You have to start your video. I know. I pressed it and it didn't, oh, it didn't um, click on for me. How's that? Yeah, great. Great. Okay. Thank you. So um, thanks for joining us, Ms. Tremley. Do you want to tell us more about the event? Yes. Um, my request is to reserve Whittemore Park. Um, and 
what I should have told you is one, I'm one of the directors of the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum. And we're having a reopening of one of our galleries, the Native American Gallery, because we were very fortunate and received uh, grant money to give that gallery a facelift. And we want to have we want to have a reopening and we're planning it for Sunday, August 7. And we're requesting the time 12 to eight for use of the park because of, we'd like to set up, we won't need to have the event, we want to clean up. We intend to invite about 60 people. Um, of course, we don't know how many will accept that, but probably 30 to 40 people. And um, we'll have, the, the museum's gonna be open for its regular hours, which are 12 to four, but we'll have remarks at 1 p.m. And I anticipate we will have two to three tables for refreshments for um, maybe cookies, cupcakes, beverages. Um, there'll be no alcoholic uh, drinks provided. And we may have a few chairs around the outside of the, of well, outside around the park for our guests. But we can't get 60 people into the museum at one time. So we anticipated the remarks would be um, on the steps and then um, people could go in and out at their leisure. And as I said, they can have some refreshments. comments well I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a fun event and so good luck with everything and and so on a motion to uh, approve by mrs mahan and a second by mr helmet mr heim mr hurd yes mr de Corsi. yes mr helmet yes mrs mahan yes mr dickens yes it's unanimous vote thank you thank you thank you very much you're welcome good night good night so on to the consent agenda. So for number four is for approval for to July banners by um, Beth Block or the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. And number five is a request a contractor drain layer license by Primo Paving. Uh, six is reappointments. All terms expire on June 30th, 2025. Board of Commissioners of, Health, of Trust Funds, Augusta Haydock, Arif Padaria uh, of the Cemetery Commission, Michelle Hassler, the Conservation Commission, Nathaniel Stevens, Council on Aging, Patricia Bailiol, and, um, and for the Equal Opportunity Advisory Committee, committee Samantha Dutra, Human Rights Commission, Rajiv Saneja, Library Trust of Trustees, I'm sorry, Library Board of Trustees, Jonathan Gates, and Open Space Committee, Anne LaRoya, and David White. And the seventh item is the minutes of the May 26, 2022 meeting. Move approval. Second. Comments, questions? All right. So I move to approve the consent agenda by Mr. Corsi, a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCorsi? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Dickens? Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Moving along on appointments, item number eight, Arlington Historic District Commission, architect at large, Brian Labal. Hello, Mrs. Labal. Good evening, how are you? Fine, thanks for um, joining us. And so, uh, wanna tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, I've lived in Arlington for 18 years. Um, I live in Arlington Heights on the Aberdeen Road. And um, I'm an architect, obviously, and I've always been interested in historic structures and preserving them and town planning. Um, and just, I'm very excited to be uh, given the opportunity to serve on the Historic Commission. Um, and I look forward to um, to fulfilling that role. Um, I, I should add that I don't live in a historic district, but my the house I live in on Aberdeen Road is listed on the, the town 
uh, um, roster of historic houses that were selected, I think in 1976. So it's an older house that um, is an example of, of the shingle style that was uh, deemed uh, noteworthy back then. Great, thank you. Comments, questions, my colleagues? Move approval. I'll take it from his behind, you know, so um, any um, comments, questions? Okay. So, was, is it a requirement, I don't think it's a requirement, is it that you have to live in a historic district? I mean, to be, all right, I didn't think so either, you know, so I, I was just kind of curious as to uh, why you mentioned that, you know, uh, and I, I do want to point out that I am impressed, me, that you worked on uh, Memorial Hall, you know, that, that was a big project, oh. you know, so, so, um, Congratulations on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, well, in, in fact, the part that I worked on in, included the, the lower level, which we called Locker Commons back then, which was sort of a student uh, space with um, study space, and they had a food court down there. And unfortunately, that's all been now renovated. It doesn't look the way it did anymore. But, but it was a very, a very interesting project. Um, and it was a lot of fun going through the whole building and seeing in its original state before we started to work on it. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and the Museum of Contemporary Art in San Diego. I mean, just did some impressive things. So, so we're very fortunate to have you um, with us here in Arlington. I mean, not only on the um, commission, but also a resident. So did you want to say something, Mr. Thomas? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Lord Arlington is very fortunate to have your talents and your time. So we appreciate you stepping up to serve. Uh, the one thing I just wanted to, to offer for your consideration as you join the commission as a new member uh, is that uh, some, some residents, and I think there was a, uh, a resolution at town meeting not long ago, uh, asked, the, asked the commission to, to try to do what they could when it, come to, when it came to uh, being flexible with things like solar panels and other energy efficient uh, installations with that with regard to historic standards. I think that you know, there's obviously some competing needs that need to be balanced with with the standards but also with energy efficiency and the town and I think um, you know certainly the government is very um, committed to energy efficiency so that would be something that I would urge you to look into and, and to think about um, in your in your role um, and once sure, again, of course thank you very much right. yes mr. Heim. just uh, uh, mr. chair just for everyone's information I think part of the reason uh, mr. Lebeau describe the fact that he's not a resident of a historic district is just for people's edification. Every historic district uh, uh, ha is technically a separate commission and they preside over uh, a particular application in the historic district. One member of a commission has to be a resident of a district where they're hearing an application. So we have at-large members like Mr. Lebeau who could serve in any district, but just so people know, anytime there's an application in a historic district, at least one member has to be a resident or a property owner of that district. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Because I mean, I, I just had the sense that that comment wasn't just a throwaway. Me, so, so I, I appreciate that. Sure, it's an at large membership, Mr. Yeah, Chair. Great, great. And thanks. So, on a vote to uh, approve the appointment, I'm sorry, on a motion to approve the appointment by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Mahan and Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So moving on, number nine on the licenses and permits. We have four approval wine and malt license for a prep neighborhood kitchen, 1367 Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. Daniel Laperfito. Hi. Hi. I have to accept my apologies. I've been uh, technically unable to fix my video here, even though it's I'm looking at a little camera, but it doesn't want to show my face. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. And and there are so many ways I I'm, I could have messed up your name. So what's the proper way to pronounce your last name? <laughs> oh my goodness! It's uh, Daniel Laperpado. Okay, uh, yeah, you know, that was the last one I thought of me and, and it was like, okay, good, good. Uh, so, um, perfect. Thank you. Hey, thank you for, um, for um, 
wanting to visit with us. I mean, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your place? Yeah, so we've been open for about six months now. We got officially going in November. Um, you know, and with the pandemic and everything else, it was, it's been a little crazy as a small business, but we've been getting some great feedback from the community and we're working hard to, you know, make everyone happy around us. And we're trying to grow organically. And, you know, when we started, we didn't really know if beer and wine was a direction we needed to go in, but um, we've had really a lot of demand from our guests. And I think for the long-term health of the business, uh, the ability to bring that on and would just help us fill our little bit of seating that we have in here. It's just 19 seats. It's a couple of tables, but for our regular revenue, having people come in and use us as a destination um, instead of just takeout would really change the dynamic for us in the long term. Okay, great, thank you. And yeah, so I turn to my colleagues, Mr. Helmuth. I'd like to move approval. And second. I'm by Mr. Corsi. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, Mr. Helmuth. I, I just I just want to vouch for the uh, for the quality of the establishment. I'm one of uh, one of this uh, perhaps frequent customers and have been delighted at the quality of the food and of the service. And I'm very happy that it's going well, um, and very happy to support this motion. Mrs. Mahan. Um, I, I would echo Mr. Helmuth's remarks. Uh, I, I've also read some really good reviews on um, your establishment. Uh, prep neighborhood kitchen um, since you opened um, and since there is this is a wine and malt license request um, who are you designating to um, oversee and um, serve the al alcohol beverages um, when appropriate on a day-to-day -day basis it'll be myself who's in charge as well as it continues to be uh, owner operated business or my main business partner, John Casino, who's, uh, we're both tips certified, and it'll be served from the counter where we'll take the order, we can ID there, and we'll bring it over to the table for service. Awesome, you answered, <clears throat> excuse me, you answered my second question. It may have been in your application, I didn't see it, but you both are tips certified, which is, is great. And um, as one of my previous colleagues, Mr. Dunn, would always um, speak up at this particular moment and say, um, just remind everybody that Arlington is very vigorous in terms of going into the establishments and um, just doing random spot checks to make sure it's in compliance and pretty much close to 100% of the time when there's been a violation, it's when the, the um, owner operator manager's plan has deviated and it's, you know, somebody called in, short staffed, you did something out of the norm, and, and that's when the violation occurs. So um, I, ju I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I've managed <clears throat> liquor licenses for hotels and fine dining for many years, and we have absolutely no intention of turning this into you know a bar atmosphere. So uh, we'll make sure to keep it nice and tidy and with our limited service. It's really hoping to drive you know the food sales here. No, I, I know you'll do a great job carrying it with their offerings because um, everything else you've done has certainly been superb. So um, thank you for answering those questions, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I appreciate you doing that, Mrs. Mahan. So anything else? Great. I mean, so on a motion uh, to approve the license by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mrs. DeCourcy. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Unanimous vote. Congratulations. Thank you. And good luck with um, the license and the continued business. Thank you so much. So, moving on, number 10 for approval Class 2 license, Eli Service Center, 125 Broadway, Elias Al Alcoholi. Visible? Uh, Elias? Um, no, you're not. Just a moment, please. Okay, no problem. How about now? Yep. Yeah, great. Thank you. So, Hi, everyone. Can, hi. Thank you. Can, yeah, can, you help, can you help me out with your last name? Al Cooley. Okay, thank you. Al Kuki, Mr. Al Kuki. Thank, thank you. So, um, do you want to tell us a bit 
I mean, about the business and the desire for the license? Well, the business is it's existing on 125 Broadway, uh, Arlington. It is a service station with gasoline pumps. And uh, we've been operating that business and own the property for almost like 15 years. We bought it from the old owner, Tom Porter, which is he used to have the class two license, uh, dealer license. So the reason we uh, we asking for it, because as we have a lot of customers that come in, they ask the, and also neighbors, they asking us if we have used cars to sell. I said, no, uh, but there's something we can look into. And it is existing license there. Uh, I said, why not? Let me go try to see if we can uh, uh, get it approved so we can uh, uh, proceed with that procedure, selling cars on a lot with uh, all the legal documents instead of doing doing it on the side with uh, with uh, illegally. Um, and uh, here we are. This is why I went to the town hall and. Uh, and I find out Tom Porter, the old owner, is still applying for it and is still using it. I said, surprise. This sh he shouldn't be done. He should be doing that. So I asked to stop Tom Porter from using the license, and I applied for it uh, last, last week. Great. All right. Well, and that's it. Thank you. Right. Well, hopefully we're moving fast enough. So, um, Mr. Hurd? I would just say... I agree. It's always better to do things legally than illegally. <laughs> with, with that, I'll move approval. Uh, on, uh, Thank you. Most, Thank you. To approve by Mr. Hard. Second one uh, question. So a uh, second by Ms. Mahan. And a question for Ms. Mahan? Yes. And I see for um, the uh, class two license that uh, you'll be open six days a week, but closed on Sundays, but the gas station is open seven days a week. The gas pumps is open seven days a week. The repair is open six days a week. And uh, yes, exactly. Okay, no, that, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that was your intention. So Monday through yes. Saturday closed on because Sunday for the class two, but not for the gas. Uh, no. Okay. The gas seven days, the shop is seven, is six days. And uh, whoever's going to sell the cars or we have to be there. The gas attendant has no business uh, or is not qualified to do those kind of paperwork and, uh, and run this kind of business. So it will be only six days a week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. No problem. Anything else? Okay. So on a motion to approve by Mr. Hurd and second by Ms. Mahan. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you Take very care. much. You're welcome. You have a good night. Thank you. Take care. Moving on. Item 11 for approval. Outdoor restaurant and retail permit application. Fusion Taste, 303 Broadway, Su Ying, Su Ying Zhang. If I could, I would just ask if you are representing them, if you could just raise your hand in Zoom. I see anyone? I don't see anyone with their raise, yeah. their yeah. hand raised. Yeah, I've lost my connection, so I can't see what's going on in there. You know, I feel kind of isolated, interestingly <laughs> enough. <laughs> so, so, so. Uh, okay, well, you know, we will put it on the agenda for the next time, right? Or, I mean, or Mr. Heim, you can give some guidance. Or you're going to say, Ms. Hart, Ms. Mara? If I could, they're just a standard outside annual permit for April through November. Okay. All of the paperwork's attached. If the board yeah. is inclined, okay. that would be move, move, that. move approval. Second. Okay. Well, we're going to zip right through this one unless someone has a comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I will say, I mean, they have some good roles there. <coughs> you know, there are I, just, I mean, it's the same setup as last year, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm very familiar with Fusion Taste, so I can vouch for them as well. Yeah, uh, the, the Arlington role is like Next dinner on Mr. Hurd, Fusion Taste. Really good. Woo. <laughs> Okay. So, um, so in my yakking there, so the, the motion was by Mr. Hurd and the second by Ms. Mahan? Uh, Mrs. 
Mahoney. That's fine. Second Amendment. That's fine. I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yep. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Okay. So moving on to open forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. So I can't see, I can't see what's going on. So do we have any hands raised? No. All right. All right. Not at this time, no. Okay, great. Uh, so, moving on, traffic rules and order of the business number 12, discussion, Alewife Brook with Mrs. Mahan, Hina and Gwen Spieth, and Kristen Anderson. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's actually uh, two agenda items under Alewife Brook, which I had emailed um, the DCR component of it about two weeks ago to my colleagues and spoke with then town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, and, and then the second part, um, and Ms. Spieth will speak to the DCR grant and Ms. Anderson will speak to the CSO meeting on uh, Wednesday night, which I did, have had two conversations with the town manager, Mr. Pooler, as well as I know Attorney Heim um, is also prepared to speak to this. So instead of stealing their thunder, because they, they all are the ones who have been doing the work on it, what I'd like to do is have um, Gwen Speed speak to the DCR grant, then Kristen Anderson speak to Wednesday night's meeting, and then if I could through you, Mr. Chair, ask Attorney Heim to give sort of the town manager, town council um, update on that, and, and then we can wrap it up on any questions, if that's okay? Great, yes. So um, if we could promote Ms. Speed and Ms. Anderson and start off with Ms. Speed. Hello. Um, hi. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first time at Select Board. Um, so, pardon me if I'm a bit nervous. I'm just going to read my um, present my pr uh, three minute presentation, and then you can ask me questions if necessary. Um, my name is Gwendolyn Speed. I live just over the Elwife Brook in North Cambridge. I lived in East Arlington for many years, and have recently been working with Save the Elwife Brook to try to stop the discharging of sewage into the brook. Um, I care about the alewife because I walk there most evenings, but also as an issue of justice, given the danger of flooding, particularly for residents of my old neighborhood in East Arlington. Thank you, Chair Diggins, Select Board Members, Town Manager, and Town Council for giving me a chance to tell you about an opportunity that has arisen to work with the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation through their matching grants program. Um, the program, as you may know, allows local groups and communities to request that DCR make improvements in DCR managed properties in those local communities. Um, I submitted an application on behalf of Save the Alewife Brook to work with DCR to address issues of water quality, stormwater management, and flood prevention along the Alewife Brook. And we were excited to hear that DCR had chosen our application to move forward to the final stage. Uh, during which DCR representatives will help us lay out the specifics of the project, including budgeting, acquiring permits, et cetera. Um, the part of our application that DCR selected was our request to update the 2003 Alewife Master Plan, which you may also know is an ambitious description of many projects to address issues facing the brook. Um, with renewed community interest in this area from abutters, commuters, and neighbors like me enjoying this lovely urban green space, it's a perfect time to work with DCR to push for actual implementation of the improvements that have been envisioned since 2003. DCR has offered to provide a two to one match if we can find $25,000 in seed money. That means if we can find $25,000, it would become $75,000 with which DCR believe that they can complete a survey of the entire area along the brook. Um, performing an up-to-date survey would be an essential first step toward actual implementation of these sorely needed improvements. Some of the projects we hope to see completed, which having a new survey would facilitate, are revitalization of Arlington's cattail marsh, um, improving its capacity as a protective stormwater wetland and habitat for myriad bird species, um, repairing the crumbling walls by the cemetery between Henderson Bridge and Broadway, as well as the cantilevered sidewalk there, dredging the brook to remove sediment and other materials that prevent the brook from flowing and increase the risk of flooding, 
bank stabilization using native species to decrease flood risk and help manage stormwater and many more ideas, but there is a lot of work that needs to be done. So um, I'm here in the hopes that you might have some guidance as to where, where or whether this $25,000 seed money might be found. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Meese. Thank you. And um, I did have the same conversation with town manager Chapterlane and Pooler. Um, there was a suggestion about the designated funds from Congresswoman Clark, the federal funds, but those are specifically earmarked. Um, and um, I don't know if Attorney Heim, I don't want him to speak. Is there anything you want to add to that in terms of the Congresswoman Clark funds as well as the finding the 25? Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. I don't think I want to speak to the Congresswoman Clark funds. I'm not familiar enough with the um, specific restrictions then. But what I do want to say is that to my understanding, and if, if Gwen's still on, the last time the Alewife Master Plan uh, was developed was, I think, in 2003 by the Metropolitan District Commission. So, um, you know, there, there may be some sources of funds that we might be able to identify either within town or uh, sources that we may be able to help identify outside of town that could help um, with a specific kind of uh, project. But um, I think a little bit further digging has to be done to figure out whether or not the, and I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with exactly what you and uh, the manager talked about, but what, what it would have to be done in order to uh, use those types of funds for this purpose. So I'm not ruling that out. I'm just saying that I'm not, I'm not familiar enough with the parameters of that to speak intelligently on it, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, but uh, I, I would be prepared at the board's direction to uh, investigate further alongside, of course, the manager in terms of what we could do um, to either support an application for funds um, or to identify funds ourselves. So, I mean, these are, um, I'm not, I'm also not 100% sure if, 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 if Gwen wants to speak to who might, who they were thinking about performing this study. Was, has that been made clear at all? The way these matching grants work, it's DCR work. So they manage the funds and they do the contracting and so forth. Um, so it would be DCR work. Um, with input from the community partner that the organization, the town, wh whoever is partnering with them. Okay. But, and, and I would add to that, we can't apply the federal funds that the Congresswoman has secured because those are specifically delineated for the Amelia Dearheart um, study in remediation, which also will help the brook as well as um, the waterway further on down. But um, when I spoke with uh, Mr. Chapdelaine um, regarding the idea came up, uh, 25,000 coming from planning, or um, he had one or two other ideas that I don't want to go on the record with, and I passed that on to Mr. Pooler um, because it's really, to me, 25,000 is a lot of money, but it's really short change for a, a really good investment for something that has to be done and will go in concert with everything else that we're doing. So I'll stop there in case my colleagues have questions on this part. Sure. Uh, Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you, Ms. Feast, for, for joining us tonight and for, for your work and uh, working to, to secure the grant. Uh, it's, it's a great job, and I appreciate the update here. Just a question on the timing for identifying the funds, what, what, um, when, when do the funds need to be identified or, or secured, to your knowledge? <laughs> well, yes, to my knowledge. Um, I, there is an application deadline, so we, we went through the first part of the process where our grant was chosen, and the next step is for us to meet with representatives from DCR in July, there is a July 14th deadline, but the woman who is deals with um, external partnerships explained, as you may know, that DCR is going through some changes and um, that it's her deadline, so it may not be super firm, but she has not yet stated such a date as to when the funds need to be. Obviously, it's it, it, the sooner the better, <laughs> but um, we weren't. We have not yet been given a specific date. Okay. In, in, after July one, certainly probably before the end of the year. I'm just thinking this isn't something that could wait till next town meeting for an appropriation. This is something that we would need to identify um, at the start of next fiscal year. It sounds like so. 
that, that just informs us in terms of the sources, potential sources of funds. So um, that's more for us to, to, to see where we look. Sure, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry if that wasn't unclear. Uh, we are plan we will be meeting with them in, Ju in July. At some point, they have yet to give us a date. Um, but, and this is for FY23, obviously, matching grant from their, their fiscal year being July. Okay, uh, thank you. And I, I want to thank Mrs. Mahan for the early request in terms of where the funds are coming from. But that, I've got a couple ideas too, but we can talk about that with Mr. Pooler and, and uh, uh, maybe at a future meeting. But th thanks again. Sounds like a great idea um, it, to, to do this. A great return on $25,000. Yeah. So I see two hands up here. I have no idea which one went first. <laughs> okay, all right. So then Mr. Juan. All right. Well, my first question is about timing, so thank you, Mr. DeCorsi, and thank you for the presentation, the work on this. It's certainly exciting after years of talking about this year to hear some affirmative steps forward do towards progress. I guess this question would be for Attorney Haim. As we work through sources of funding, is there some, either Save Elwife Brook, or is there an entity that exists that can legally fundraise for funds like this? So. Um that's a good question, Mr. Hurd. Uh, my understanding from reviewing the previous master plan, if you look at the implementation chapter, and when well, you've probably already done this, you'll see a number of private organizations that appear to have done fundraising on behalf of um, oh, on behalf of the the plan and some of the projects uh, they're under. Some of these organizations, uh, m m many of these organizations, still exist. Some of them look like they may not um, currently be active. So yes, there are organizations that have a fundraising capacity. Uh, as folks know, the town doesn't generally have the ability to raise funds in quite the same way. It's a legal um, restriction on the town. But there are also resources that we do have at our disposal, uh, folks, uh, particularly in the planning department, who are aware of potential grant funding sources. The real trick of this will be, are there grant sources out there that are going to match up with this timeline, or are they going to be able to move quickly enough? Um, but we do have a, a lot of folks um, who are really well versed in uh, applying for different types of grants to try to funnel them through. So obviously, like for example, if we had had a little bit more of a lead time on this, and that's not a complaint, you know, we might have been able to identify. I'm not sure about CDBG; that might not be appropriate, but something along those lines. But usually, those funding cycles start a little bit earlier. So we'll have to see what we can do to A, help identify uh, grant sources, B, uh, a lot of the funding sources were uh, what you're talking about, were able, uh, uh, nonprofits that were able to engage in fundraising. Um, the town does have a lot of interface, as members of the board know, uh, with uh, different friends groups from friends of the Council on Aging. Um, but I'm not currently aware of, I believe there was a Friends of the Alewife Reservation I'm not sure what their active status is now. And I apologize for that. I can check in on whether Friends of the Alewife Reservation, who had been a part of the previous um, master plan, is still an active organization. And I don't mean to try to kick it back, because I think $25,000 would be well spent if we can find it within the town budget or within the town through grant status. It just it seems like such an aggressive timeline that you, you never know, we, we do have very generous people in Arlington or in the area that if it could be a hybrid approach where we try to see, work with some of these entities to publicize what it is that we're trying to accomplish and then supplement it with town funds if we can. But just an idea to, mm -hmm. that's more direct. <laughs> I mean, a goal fund, fund me, the money comes in day of, so if there is an entity that can legally solicit funds, then it's a good option to take a look at to at least get a portion of this. Yeah, and so, I'm, so I'm sorry, I don't want to speak out of turn. In some ways, what we'd be looking for is something along the lines of affordable housing trust, but for conservation type projects. Unfortunately, we don't have a mechanism like that. So, but but there, but there, there are some potential things that we can think about. I'll continue to talk about it with the manager. Um, as well as um, uh, see what types of grants might be available, especially since we're talking about a relatively small scale. Okay. Uh, well, it is an aggressive and timeline. And, uh, so um, 
So, Mrs. Spees, who, who's going to design a study? Um, so this would be determined in the, in the next meeting with DCR. We would be um, finalizing a description of the project. And um, at that point, we would be, I mean, there, there, there are people who, um, their staff who perform such work, presumably, but in consultation with us um, and, and presumably experts in the town. Right, um, because I mean, it's, it's potentially a good study, but I mean, it's all in the details. I mean, and absolutely, so, we would yeah. want to ensure that it was a survey that served the purpose of, of um, preparing us for implementation of these projects. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so, so I, I, I would hope, yeah, I, I'd hope that we would at least get to see I mean, what, the, what they propose to do before I mean, having to decide whether or not we're gonna fund it. So we'll have the ability to see, right? I mean, it's not like we it's not like we put the funds up and then the study's design and we we get to see how the study's designed and then and then decide whether to fund it um that my understanding is that the point of the matching grant project is that it's not just a sort of black box within dcr but that it's an ongoing conversation with the right. partner and dcr um determining how the funds are deployed Right. That's yeah. my understanding. I understand, because I mean, I mean, it, it often goes both ways to I me. Mean, I saw my colleague like shaking his head, like, no. Because a lot of times, I mean, you can't, you can't do the design until you have the funds, because doing the design is part uh, of the funding. So that's what, really what I was getting at there. You know, yeah, is, I mean, that may well be the case. Yeah. Um, but my understanding is that this, the mechanism allows for participation and intervention from the partner. That that's the price, you know. That's part of what you get for for the partner providing right. matching funds. Is yeah. you know you get the ability to to influence the project. Yeah, and, and that, that's that's ideal. I mean, so that's great. That's good to hear. You know. And but I don't know about the timing. It's conceivable right. that they will say we need the funds to right. go forward with the creation of the survey. Right. Um, Right. Yeah. So well, we'll see where we can get it from. And I do know that David Morgan, our environmental planner, yeah. he has been very active um, on behalf of the planning department, right. not only with Save the Alewife, but he's gone down to this particular right. um, part of land with DCR, all the way down to Arizona Terrace. Um, and he's been very involved and wants to be involved yeah. in this in some facet. So, yeah. but we'll see where yeah. it goes from there. So, yeah. if that's okay, and then go to the segue into the second part. Uh, well, just just oh, I guess maybe one more general question. This is oh, for, for folks here. In the, uh, Everyone here who's been around longer than I have, you know, uh, and, and Mr. Heim. So, be, is this the first time we've encountered something like this? I mean, like like a need to fund, I mean, something on such a short-term basis, you know? We've done matching grants before um, with with then MDC, now DCR. Um, we've had friends groups that yeah. have um, uh, also subsidize uh, the amount. But unfortunately for East Arlington, it's really tapped out with the MUGAR effort. Right. Um, and you can only go to the citizens so many times. And where this would be, the town would have a role in it. And I know that David Morgan has been very active and would continue to be active on it. Um, and I, I don't mean to minimize it or maximize it, but for 25,000, you know, we've, we funded master plan studies you know, for the town, yeah. it, it, for six figures, and yeah. you know, um, this really is um, twenty-five is a lot of money, but it's you know, Mr. Chapter Lane saw so, so no problem with. Yeah, and it, I, so it, I just don't want to keep you know. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not questioning the amount. Yeah. It's more more a matter how do we generalize. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, we've done this. this we've been solution. very creative on other things before. So. Yeah, you know, so so I mean, I like to think there's a, a mechanism for handling this kind of. Request and if there isn't, then let's think about how we put a mechanism in place because we're going to get this again, you know. And so, so there would be some criteria by which we evaluate, and then if it's not us, then maybe FinCom or some other entity, I mean, and that they have a reserve of funds, I mean, I mean so we kind of budget that out I mean, in town meeting, going, well, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, but we have this amount, I mean, and then based on the requests that come in, and when they come in, we allocate out, I mean, so. Uh, yeah, Mr. Diggins, I mean, from my perspective, I, I think I concur with Ms. Mrs. Mahan that we've certainly had things that don't fit into our grant or budget cycles in the past. 
The question is just, you know, in the details, how do you get from point A to point B? And right. that's what we've got to figure out is, given the timeline that we have, how do we get from point A to, uh, from point, a to point B? Um, it's not going to be the way we would do a CPA project because the timing doesn't fit up with it. Um, but I, I think that, as Ms. Mahan is suggesting, I think there are other tools at our disposal that we'll have to examine. I don't know that it's easy to have like a standing grant application type of situation. I don't, there's not an appropriation for that ordinarily. Um, but as some folks have suggested, there are other financial mechanisms that we should be looking at, especially when we're talking about a matching grant yeah. and the state is willing to pony up a certain amount of money um, to achieve a certain result. So, yeah, all right. That's it for me. So, thank you. Uh, so, Ms. Anderson or, or Ms. Bates, oh. anything, anything else you want to add? Or oh, Mr. Helmuth? All right. I'm getting signals here. So. <laughs> Okay. Nope, that's fine. Um, okay. If you want to go to the second part, yes. um, with um, Ms. Anderson speaking about the um, CSO meeting, uh, June 29th, I've had conversations with yeah. the chair, forwarded to my colleagues the information, had conversations with town manager Chapterlane, now town manager Pooler, as well as um, attorney Hine. But if I could turn it over to Ms. Anderson. Just sure. To yeah. Hi, Ms. Anderson. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair Diggins, Select Board, Town Manager, and Town Council for hearing from uh, Save the Ill Wife Brook this evening. Gwen and I are here uh, with Save the Ill Wife Brook co-founder David White, and we want to invite everyone to a very important public Zoom meeting on Wednesday night at 6 p.m. The great cities of Somerville and Cambridge and the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority are starting to plan new sewer improvements that affect the Ill Wife Brook. Wednesday night's meeting is the first of very few public opportunities to weigh in on their new plans to make improvements to the alewife sewage problem. Um, as you know, last year, over 50 million gallons of untreated sewage pollution was dumped into our little alewife brook. That is the same amount of sewage pollution that was discharged in 1994. This is a terrible situation. Um, I want everybody to keep in mind that Cambridge has really done some great work to make improvements over the years. However, Somerville's Tannery Brook combined sewer outfall is awful and out of compliance with the law. And we think that the biggest problem in the alewife is the MWRA's sewer system. It needs major upgrades. The reason that it is so important for folks to come out to this meeting is that the EPA wants to hear from the public. They want to hear from all of us, and the MWRA isn't going to spend the money required unless the public demands it. So please come out to the meeting. I know that people are busy and there's other stuff going on. Um, so if you can't make it, maybe um, consider writing a letter to the EPA, Cambridge, Somerville, and MWRA. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Thank you. And this, if I could at this point, um, when we've been discussing the CSO issue and Ally Brook, with Mr. Chapterlane and now Mr. Pooler um, in Attorney Heim. I will say um, two previous meetings, um, Mr. Chapterlane and Attorney Heim have been attending and this is another example of one of the meetings where we definitely need somebody from the town. Um, I mean, I'll be zooming in, but um, I, I was wondering if I could turn it over to, a turn, to someone from the town to make a statement because part of the reason why I think this has been sort of exciting and evolving and happening is because we have Save the Alewife Brook, we have Arlington's Conservation Commission, but we also have the partnership with the select board and town officials, and that's really helped um, with the EPA, um, as well as getting the at attention of um, definitely Cambridge, who's always been a partner and willing to do something. And some of all for years, Mayor Curtitone was, a, my opinion, a total waste of time, wouldn't listen to it, but we have a new mayor and a new representative who is receptive to that. But um, I'm assuming that somebody from the town will be there to make a statement on behalf of the town. Thank you, Mr. Mahan, Mr. Sure. Chairman. Yes, yes, yes. So I just want to um, highlight the fact that I, I think we're all talking about the same thing. This is a basically a combined sewer overflow um, control plan update. So it's essentially uh, the involved municipalities in MWRA coming back to sort of provide an update on what they've been uh, how they're thinking about the long-term control plan. Uh, you were on the same page on that, correct, Ms. Anderson? Um, I mean, my understanding is that it's a public meeting, and I know the EPA wants 
to hear from the public. Um, and one of the things that we want to get out of this meeting, in fact, is um, to encourage the um, sewage polluters to, um, to, to listen to the public and to make the public a partner in the new plan. Um, that, that's, that's one thing that we're looking for. Another thing that we're looking for is we are um, hoping that they will incorporate climate change projections um, in their plan design. Um, yeah, so um, I, we plan on speaking. So, uh, and so I, I, I think I, that- I didn't mean to confuse things. I just meant that this is a oh. joint uh, publicly posted meeting yes. posted by both Cambridge and Somerville. It is going to be a public meeting. I just want to be clear on what the scope is. It's, it's been talked a little bit about as like a hearing. It's a public meeting to get an update on long-term control plan. And in those yes. meetings, one of the things that's been very valuable is to hear from people in the public, to um, have some feedback from other folks, including some technical folks, about whether this plan is satisfactory or not. And one thing that this board has made very clear is um, that it's extremely concerned about these uh, uh, overflows and outfalls. And the manager and other folks um, uh, and on the government side of things uh, share a lot of the concerns of Save the Ale Wife Brook, um, as well as uh, some of the responses to the proposals that MWRA has sort of started with. So it'll be important to have a continued public presence. Um, my deputy town council, Michael Cunningham, will be there uh, representing the legal department for this meeting. Um, after this meeting, I think it would be helpful. Uh, Mrs. Mahan and other select board members uh, have talked about wanting to develop a written position uh, to provide as some feedback, even if it's preliminary to the formal hearing stage, that uh, codifies some of the perspective that Mrs. Anderson is sharing with us with respect to um, uh, making sure that the modeling is updated to reflect uh, the impact of climate change with respect to taking a more aggressive uh, posture with respect to the water quality. Um, for folks who aren't as familiar with this issue, um, essentially what uh, Ms. Anderson is referencing is that as uh, there are extreme events, the outfalls into the Alewife Brook affect the water quality. This all ties into both a Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection permitting as well as a larger EPA permitting scheme. So the EPA's role is sort of concurrent with Mass DEP to enforce essentially water quality standards and uh, the NIPTES permitting. So I don't want to go into too technical of a, a, a sort of analysis of it, but I think one of the things that will be helpful is to both have a presence at that meeting from the legal department standpoint um, to represent the town and anybody else who obviously wants to join, uh, but also to uh, get the sense from the uh, public feedback and the many organizations that are interested in it and providing commentary uh, during these public meetings uh, to distill that into something that might be a written uh, statement from this body as well as potentially from the Conservation Commission, the town manager, about our concurrence and agreement with certain principles with respect to the standard which we want to hold um, this long-term control plan too. So there's a lot of obviously moving parts to the um, CSO's issues, but is that uh, satisfactory, Mr. Mahan? All right, thank you. Sure. Yes, yes, no, I'm, I'm fine. As far as that, I mean, I'll, I will try to attend. I mean, I think, I mean, it's, it's Zoom, you know, so so I mean, I'll be able to take that from, from work, I mean, uh, but it seems like you're all set with the talking, you I know, mean, uh, so, so, so I'm, I'll be happy to have a presence because what I really would like to get out of this is, is learning more about it. I've read, you know, um, there's a, I guess, a draft plan that came out. You know, I read that and that was pretty informative, but I still feel that there's a lot more learning to do on my part before I can really speak in a competent and confident way. You know, so, so I'm doing my best. I will do my best to be there. You know, so, um, so I take it, I mean, this is just a discussion. We don't need to vote or anything out of this. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Anderson, and thank you, Ms. Spieth. You know, this has been thank helpful. You. Thank Good night. you. All right. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. Yeah, well, and town meeting voted for the resolution, too, right? Mm -hmm. so, yep. yep. That's right. Following through, following through on that. You know, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So moving on. Item 13, discussion and vote, MBTA, MBTA bus stop consolidation on Park Ave. Mr. Amstutz. 
and I guess we have the answers to that. I've seen transportation planner, um, Bon Zhu uh, from MBTA, Olivia Mobayad, MBTA, Natalie Raffal, McMahon, McMahon Associates, and Sandra Clary, Clary uh, McMahon Associates. Good evening. Hi. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Okay. Do I need to share my screen? So I think you guys already have our presentation PPT in front of your guys. Sure. And uh, Ms. Meyer will take care of that. He needs it. You should have permission. Okay. Let me share my screen first. So everyone's in? Okay. So um, I guess maybe, so uh, Mr. Amsis, who's gonna lead this off? Is it you or? Yeah, myself will do the presentation. And our design consultant will be do the uh, some design uh, concept. Okay. Okay, so yes, I that's, think that's you fine. guys. Go ahead. Okay, so I think you guys can see PPT right now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so good evening chairs and the uh, select board members. Uh, my name is Bin Zhu, a project manager from MBTA. So today we are very happy to be here with our design consultant, uh, McMahon Associate, to introduce our PADI project that we will plan to do in the town of Arlington for the Park Ave and uh, what you say have uh, bus stop change. Uh, Next slide. Uh, so the pr purpose of the plan for the accessible transit infrastructure project is uh, to create the uh, ADA compliant the bus stop in system wide for our customer who have a deeper um, mobility needed and improve the customer safety. Uh, I think seeing the uh, track to the 1990, all municipality and agency are required to uh, improve the upgrade of pedestrian infrastructure to meet the ADA compliance. So that's a uh, disability advocate uh, brought lawsuit to MBTA to request the MBTA to uh, comply the mass transit across our whole systems. That's why it improves the bus stop system wide is part of that uh, agreement. Uh, the bus stop in Arlington Park Ave and Watu City Ave has been prioritized uh, for the design in this year due to the uh, one or more major access barrier as well as uh, related needed. So there are some bus stops uh, potentially changed or need to improve that relate to the bus road uh, 62, road 76, and uh, road 78 in order to make accessible or uh, accessibility improvement on operation improvement. Uh, the bus stop uh, improvement scope will be include the uh, improvement to the sidewalk, uh, creation of the crosswalk, ADA compliant curb ramps, and sign uh, bus sign uh, stops. Uh, the MBTA will submit the uh, proposed uh, plans to Town of Arlington for review and approval during the design process. Uh, when we have a uh, final approval from the Arlington, and then our on-call contractor will be do the uh, construction work as soon as possible. So we estimate around the $800,000 investment in the town of Arlington for design and the constructions. Uh, the MBTA is funded by the FARS state bond and federal transit agency to perform this money. Uh, the, third, the, third, the third slide, uh, I think is uh, showing the timeline. We have a design and public outreach. Uh, process since uh, 2020. Uh, you can see in this chart, our design has always communicated with the uh, uh, butters and the public and uh, fully consider the view of comments of the public and town of Arlington. Uh, last year, December, we have a public meeting uh, uh, to do the, regarding the park archive, our, to introduce our plans and proposals. So we hope, you know, our bus stop improvement project can bring the transportation uh, accessibility and safety to our community members and our customers. Uh, the, third, the fourth space, I want to turn it over to our 
uh, to Oliver Mobade, our senior transport, uh, transportation planner from MBTA to introduce the service planning related to the service bus road that we plan to make a bus stop improvement. So Olivia, it's your turn. Sure, thank you, Ben. And have a, hello everyone, good evening. Um, so just an overview of the bus service uh, within the specific area that we're um, referring to this evening. Um, we have, depending on how you slice it, three to four routes that serve this area. The first of which is Route 62, which serves um, from the Bedford VA to Alewife weekdays um, during peaks um, or rush hours, AM and PM. The 76 runs at the same times and uh, from Alewife goes to MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Um, the combined route 62 and 76 runs weekday, midday and evening and Saturday um, as a combined route that uh, serves Lincoln Laboratory and Bedford VA um, from Alewife and the route 78 uh, connects Arlmont Village to Harvard Station uh, seven days a week. Uh, I will note, I'm sure many of you all have been looped into the bus network redesign process that's going on. Um, in our current draft proposed network, we are not proposing any changes to the way that buses navigate throughout this area. Um, there are changes in terms of uh, service levels. Uh, we're proposing the Route 62 run seven days a week instead of um, just six days a week. Um, the 76 would be peak only on weekdays um, and the 62, 76 would not run. Instead, they would be the, the separate routes um, in, instead at all times. Um, and the 78 would have some um, potential um, scheduling changes as well. I'll hand it back over to Ben. Thanks, Olivia. So next one, we want to invite the uh, McMahon's consult, design consultant, Natalie, to give us more details about the proposed change. So Natalia, so it's your yeah. turn. Hi, hello everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give an overview of the changes. Uh, so you can see all of the changes to the bus stop locations proposed in this area in the image on the left um, that shows stops that would be improved in green, uh, stops with no change in yellow, new stop locations uh, in dark blue, and then removed stops in red. Uh, and so the image on the right shows the overall future stop network um, with only the stops that would remain as part of this plan. Um, and so running through the changes north to south, uh, you can see the stop pair at Park Ave and Wollaston are both improved. Uh, the single stop at Park Ave at Appleton is removed. The Park Ave and Florence Ave stop pair would both be improved. Um, Park and Oakland are maintained in place with no change. Um, and then at Park Circle, there's a few things going on. Uh, the Park Ave at Prospect Street stop is being removed where it is today and relocated to further south to Park Ave at Park Circle. Um, the Park Circle and Park Ave stop within the circle is removed and the Park Ave at Park Circle stop that serves uh, the outbound routes on Park Ave is uh, improved. It's uh, in green behind the red stop. Um, and then the Park Circle at Eastern Ave stop is maintained in place. Then we have the stop pairs at Wachusett Ave and Hillside Ave removed, the Park Ave and Wachusett Ave stops removed. Um, and then as you go to the southernmost section, Park Ave at Cedar inbound uh, stays in place and is improved, uh, but the outbound stop Park Ave at Cedar is relocated further south to Glenburn, uh, and that's ultimately consolidated with the West Service Road and Park Ave stop, which is removed where it is today and would be essentially those two stops are combined into one stop at Glenburn. Um, and then lastly, the East Service Road stop is improved uh, where it is today. Um, so overall, that total seven improved stops, six removed stops, and three stops consolidated into two new stops. Um, so if you go to the next slide. Um, so looking ahead at our schedule and next steps, um, 
After today, we would proceed into 30% design plans uh, from July to September. And then after that, between November and February 2023, we'd be looking at 100% design, uh, looking at 2023 as the construction year for these stops, assuming about one to two weeks per location. Thanks, Natalie. So I think that's it. So this is our plan and proposal. So any questions we would like to answer? Thank you. And so I'll turn to my colleague, Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I th thank you for the uh, presentation tonight. Um, just a comment be before the questions. And this, Mr. Anstutz had made reference to the Pleasant Street project in his memorandum to us. And we approved that on June 9th, 2021. And to my understanding, those bus stops have never been changed. So um, that was done over a year ago. So I'm concerned about the timing of these projects because that was a night that we put it on the agenda. We had some public opinion uh, that we received, some criticism that we received, but we were told that that was a project that should be done quickly and it still hasn't happened. So I, I can ask offline, but I, I am concerned when I see the timing here. That was a project that was going to be done in June of 2021 and completed in the fall of 2021, and it's and, and still, not, still not done. This is a longer time period because there's more improvements, but um, I, I'm, I'm concerned when we talk about these changes and you ask us to vote for these changes, um, could you tell us how solid these estimates are on, on, on timing going forward? Yeah, so I think, uh, Sandra, could you answer the questions? Sure, I can respond to that. Um, so I was there for the select board vote on this last go round, um, and the, the plan was to advance it to 100% design. Unfortunately, we encouraged um, some significant design challenges, including encroachments um, that would incur um, requiring easements and license agreements. So they just got extremely complex as we advanced through the, the design. So. Um, Daniel and Wayne Chouinard and others at the, the town would attest to the fact that we have advanced design, unfortunately not at the, the speed we had anticipated, but the hope is that they will still make it in this construction season. Um, we're finalizing the design, a revised 100% design currently. Um, so this is the schedule that you see here is contingent upon the, the board vote tonight. Um, then it, it takes you know, a little bit of time for us to mobilize. We need to do some survey and then we'd advance to design. So all going smoothly, um, this is a, a realistic schedule that we would expect to advance design. Um, we also rely heavily on the town's um, review um, in a timely manner. We know everybody has um, got a lot going on. So sometimes the, the review isn't as timely as we had hoped. So um, that's another determining factor in the schedule. Sure. And just a question on the proposed changes, and one in particular on the outbound um, stop that's being proposed at Park Ave and Park Circle. That looks like it's right across the street from the fire station, um, as opposed to the stop now that is a little bit further up um, at the at the edge of the circle. And I'm wondering, are there are there sidewalk improvements being planned there? Because there's no sidewalk there. There's a bike path there, and it, it just feels like that's going to be a real challenge for people getting off the bus where they where they would walk and um, maybe crossing the street. Whereas the existing stop there, again, which is on the edge of the circle, the the current cutout with the the 78 used to terminate there, um, that has a sidewalk, and it, and I'm just wondering what what specific improvements are being planned for that park circle stop, because it seems like a tough location. I can start to answer that. All right, so you're referring to the stop, the inbound park circle stop that's on Park Ave? No, I, I, I'm looking at the, the in, stop. In I, dark and I think it's both map? southbound and northbound. So I think you're adding stops. Or, proposing to add stops on both sides of Park Ave. So I'm, I'm looking at the future stop network and the 
new stop location that's right on Park Ave, right next to the water tower. Yep. Um, so as part of the stop improvement, there would be sidewalk improvements that connect that stop to the crosswalk that goes directly into Park Circle. Um, All right, because that, that might require, I don't know if that's even our property there, and, and whether it's the, the, the water tower and, and what's, um, what's going to be improved there. But I'd, I'd ask, as you go along, I guess we'll have that opportunity to review it, but it's, it's uh, it just in looking at that recently, it looks like a tough spot. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Percy. No, I was just, I might be reading this wrong, but I see that new stop on the fire station side of Mass Ave. If it's on yeah, the, to on clarify, it is of... on the same side as the fire station. Okay, I, 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 I was looking at Mr. Amstutz's uh, memo where I thought on the outbound side too there was there was a stop there. Yeah, the outbound um, stop is remaining on the little triangular parcel okay. there that's just kind of to the north of the circle. Okay, all right. So to be clear, the oh. um, stop next to the fire department would be served by Route 76 inbound and outbound since it circles around there. Uh, that might be part of the confusion. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mahan. Um, I have all the <laughs> different routes, uh, current and proposed in front of me. So um, I'm going to try to be... Uh, as coherent as possible. And I know a lot, an anchor part of this is um, ADA compliance and um, pedestrian safety. So I have to say, I'm, I'm really dismayed and would like to advocate for or find out why. Um, when I look at Route 84 and I look at or bus number 84, bus number 78. If I look at the current configuration and then I look at the proposed configuration, if you're someone who um, is able-bodied or um, who is disabled in some way, you, under this plan, um, are pretty much abandoned, whereas you weren't before by the 84 um, and the 78, um, with you have a big gap of no service between Wachusett Ave and Prospect Ave um, for the 84 you're eliminating two four five stops and you can't get it again until Park Ave and Cedar Ave so if you if you're on the 84 um, and you're not 100% able-bodied um, you either can get on at Wachusett Ave and Prospect or Park Ave at Cedar Ave. Am I correct for bus number 84? That is correct. Um, to, be, to be clear, we don't currently run uh, Route 84. Uh, it's been suspended, uh, I believe, due to COVID for at least over uh, 18 months. Okay. All right. So it's included. And that is not part of the proposed bus network redesign network either. Okay, then I'll ignore that since it's in there. No, same question for the um, bus 78. Is that still running? And it's the same thing of, it's a, quite a distance between Wachusett Prospect and Park Ave Cedar. Uh, so the routing of the 78 is a little tricky because it goes up Park Ave, it goes around the circle, and then it backtracks on Park Ave and heads down Wachusett Ave. Um, so it doesn't exactly make a straight shot. Uh, it has that, that service on those stops around the circle as well. Um, but in that proposed plan, you are correct in, in noticing that there is a gap um, that is uh, on our larger end of our preferred scale um, within that area. So why is it not stopping the 78 at Wachusett Hillside in um Wachusett Park. Um, so there were several considerations. Sorry, what was that? And can that be some? Can one or both of those somehow be incorporated, or is this this is it? Uh, at this point, this is our proposed plan. Um, there were several considerations that went into identifying 
to stop improvements or removals. Um, one of the main ones was just configurations of the roadway and safety considerations in terms of um, just the roadway configuration and the intersection of Park Ave and Wachusett is difficult to make those stops accessible and provide a safe crossing across Park Ave. So that was um, a main reason to remove that pair. Um, and then low ridership, um, you know, these stops, many of the stops removed here are seeing less than 10 riders a day. Um, and so it was a combination of factors, including roadway safety, pedestrian conditions, ridership, uh, stop spacing, and proximity to land uses that, that went into identifying the stop plan. Okay, and I guess I have a feeling I, you all might not have an answer to this question, but I'll, I'll probably speak to it under new business. But what was it taken into consideration the um, ginormous amount of assessment that the town of Arlington pays to the T, uh, 3.1 million, whereas you know Lexington pays 750,000, uh, Braintree pays um, pays 842,000. Um, and, and, and the reason I say that is I understand what you're saying about low ridership and it has to be something um, that makes sense and hits a number, but where our assessment rate is so high and people say to us, why is it that high? What are we getting for that money? Can that play into any of the decisions in terms of it may be low ridership for the T, but where we're paying beyond top dollar under our, our MBTA assessment? Um, was that taken into consideration or can that be in order to um, add a few more stops? Can I jump in? Um, uh, assessment was not a determining factor in it, no. Um, you know, we're, we're really looking to improve service, reliability, accessibility, factoring in access to the stop, um, trying to improve trip times, addressing ADA accessibility. So all the determining factors that Natalie had previously mentioned were really the driving factors. It, it really doesn't come down to the, the capital or the, the funding investment. Okay, no, that's fine. It just seems kind of a, a, a contradictory in terms of we're doing this, especially for ADA compliance, but we're, we're telling people um, the spots where you're gonna be able to have a ramp and, and, and get to the bus in this particular stretch, um, you got a long way to travel to get to the two, so I'm just trying to do my best to advocate. But it sounds like nothing's going to change, so I'll leave it at that, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As a, a resident that lives right there and would be most inconvenienced on this board by the removal of those stops, I'd say, I mean, one thing to consider is that this is. This looks all well and good on a flat map on an iPad, but this is a very hilly area. And I live at Renfrew and Hillside, so about one block down from the removal of the Wachusett and Hillside stops. Mm -hmm. And on this map, I could just walk down Renfrew to Cedar and Hillside, but that's a pretty steep drop. <laughs> My street goes straight down. Unfortunately, when the kids drive their bikes down, they disappear over the crest. So, I mean, it is in practicality, if you go out there, it can be a burden on people to remove those stops. I'm on board with Hillside and Wachusett, I mean, uh, sorry, Park Avenue and Wachusett, because I think that intersection with the island in the middle is a little bit of a nightmare as it is with adding the bus stop, creates some confusion. I mean, to the extent that there is any sort of leeway on this, I mean, I see a fair amount of people that use the Watch You Sit and Hillside stops. A lot of people you, that I see use this bus line. Many people drop the kids off from school and go up to Watch You Sit in Florence, but I do see in the morning a lot of people at the Watch You Sit in Hillside, and it's a flat road, and it's a pretty easy stretch. There's good visibility, so if someone's there, you stop. If, no one's there. You keep going, and it keeps it can keep the bus on pat on on pace. So, from what I can see, and based on just living right here, I would say that if if there's any leeway, like Mrs. Mahan said, maybe there's not. I think the Wachusett and Hillside stops are used, and 
if you go up hillside this way, it, I mean, you're going straight up a hill. So if people live here to get to this, any of the other stops, it can be difficult. And there are, I know, at least two or three residents I see going up and down these, this area in wheelchairs. Whether or not they use the bus, I don't know, but certainly want to have the bus accessible for them. So I would take a look at those stops. Um, the rest of them seem to make sense to me. Um, but, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Heard. Anyone else? Mr. Helmuth? Uh, I maybe respond just to um, the last oh, yeah. comment before. Yes, please um, do. Yes, sorry about that. Please do. Would the board um, consider um, removing the Oakland Ave stops instead of the Hillside stops? Would that be more palatable? Um, could you repeat that, please? Would the board be receptive to consider removing the Oakland Ave stops instead of the Hillside stops on which you sit? I think, sorry. No, please, please. I mean, I'm, I'm deferring I mean, to you all who live in the area more. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, because it becomes different ball of wax, but it's a straight run from Florence to Hillside. So I think it's better. And a lot of people actually, I mean, a good amount of people get on. I would, would think the ridership at Wachusa in Florence is pretty high because people drop their kids off, like I said, in, and jump on the bus right from there. Um, I guess my thing with that particular street, again, is that it's straight and flat, and if the bus sees people, it stops. If it doesn't, it doesn't have to stop, and it, it can just move along. But I think it's preferable. If it was one or the other, then I would say leave it at Hillside and watch use it and take out Oakland, but I mean, yeah, I guess I'll see what the board has to say. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I have a question. Yeah, Mr. Hurd. Um, either to the representatives or uh, Mr. Amstutz or Attorney Heim, can the board just, um, if a majority agreed um, as part of our vote, to put, to not eliminate anything and, and to put the um, bus stop back at, not at um, Park Ave and Cedar, um, let that one go away, but can we put it back in, or will the representatives um, from the consultants, uh, I'm, I agree with Mr. Hurd on the, um, the island there, and I think that's, is that Park Ave and Cedar? That's Park Ave and Wachusett. Park Ave and Wachusett. I understand that one. That one is confusing in the morning, Cedar especially in the winter, and it's a hill, but um, I'd like to Instead of saying, you know, switch it out for something else, if we can just add that other one um, back in, which is um, Hillside and Wachusett. Uh, Wachusett and Hillside. Is that something we can do, or is that something the consultants would be willing to do and recommend? So yeah, I think, I think we, we can address it. So. Was that an answer? We just didn't hear you clearly. Yeah, I think we, I think we can address what to say about here. Have. So we will be to sound the. We can back to the our. We can do research and back to our. You know the the town office the transportation engineer. Hey. Okay, I think what you're saying is you, you've certainly heard the feedback from this board, um, and that you're going to take that into consideration and then come back with the feedback exactly. and recommendation on that. Okay, so I, I would strongly, um, hopefully, anticipate seeing that particular one bus stop um, be included back in, um, and I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Ms. Helmuth? I'd like to add my support to that. I think I trust my local topographical expert. <laughs> um, and, uh, I, and I also agree that, because I live very near there as well, that Park Avenue, Wachusa Avenue is a safety nightmare. I've experienced it myself trying to get on the bus and almost got run over trying to race it, so I'd rather not, I'm glad to remove that enticement to cross busy traffic during, during uh, rush hour. Uh, I also do want to say, so yeah, so I, I, would, I would make the same request to the, to the team, to the consultants, to consider uh, putting back uh, watches and Hillside before we vote on this. Uh, I do want to express my appreciation, however, to the receptivity to public feedback um, in retaining Park Avenue Oakland and particularly Park Circle and Eastern Avenue 
in response to a couple residents who are both, uh, my neighbors who have uh, disabilities and really need that Park Circle and Eastern Avenue uh, stop. So thank you for your responsiveness to that already. I was looking for that tonight and was very pleased to see that, that, that those made it back into the plan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hart? I was also going to say thank you. As I read through the comments, it seemed like a lot of the comments were addressed and the plan reflected what, what the public comments came in. I did notice one said, why were there no public town officials there so I guess we'll have to go to the next <laughs> make sure a couple of us are at the next public outreach meeting but so. huh that's interesting I mean I thought I was at that meeting you know so anyways you know anyways uh yeah I mean I think you did a good job with the, um, especially with the, the the survey you know uh and and um and I, I was I read through a lot of the comments not all of them I and mean, you know I I will say there was one comment in particular that I liked on question number five and it was well never mind I mean I'm scrolling at the wrong place uh, so a, a few questions you know um, so it, the removal of the stops as planned I mean how, how much um, how much time would it have reduced the trip time I can answer that one if, uh, if you'd like uh, the Standard that we use, um, again, it typically varies based on, on multitude of factors, including congestion and stop lights versus stop signs and ridership. Uh, but the standard assumption is um, with one bus stop removed, the runtime of the bus is uh, subtracted about 30 seconds. Um, so when you think about everyone on the bus, uh, that can add up to multiple minutes or even hours per day of time savings. Gotcha. Hey, thank you. And so, uh, kind of uh, along those same lines, you hey, know, so how much does it increase the reliability hey, of of that service? Again, it varies based upon um, the the environment that we're we're working in. Um, and of course, that's not the only factor when we look at doing something like an elimination or consolidation. Um, but uh, the assumption is typically that uh, reliability would increase. Oh, great. And with respect to, um, I, mean, I understand that a lot of this is driven by um, Patty. You know, is, is, are there budget considerations that go into um, your, how you determine the number of stops? Uh, you can um, improve on a given line? There is no established budget for a stop or a line, no. Um, the, the cost can vary quite substantially from like a small minor improvement to you know, something much more elaborate that might include modification of the curb. I understand. Uh, but yeah, there's but... no predetermined cost. Our stuff okay. or per route or per municipality. All right. Well, that's good. That's good to know. So, so I appreciate that. So, um, all right. Well, that's all I have in, in terms of just general questions. And I'm, I'm really going to defer to my colleagues you know, on this because you all know the routes and the stops much better than I do on this. I mean, so, so I'm going to turn to someone. Um, I'd like to. I, sorry, if okay. I could. There are, I don't know if it's an open meeting to the public, but there have been a few questions. If it is open. Um, if not, that's... Was this noticed as a hearing, Mr. Chair? No. No. No, it's just a discussion. It's not a public hearing. Yeah, it's no. not a public hearing. You know, Perfect. So, so, yeah. I'll tell them to follow up. Yeah, okay, great. Or they can put it in the Q&A. Yep, there are a couple questions. Thank you. I think what... I guess I'll be guided by the chair in, in um, town council that um, we, the board, approve the recommendations as presented in this memo um, with the caveat of um, also as represented by the consultants to um, re-examine and possibly re-establish the Wachusett Hillside Ave stop. So I would put that on as a starting motion so that um, 
it's not the motion is not contingent that that has to happen it's a motion what I understand is they need a motion from this board to accept and approve these changes as recommended by uh, through the planning department mr. Amstutz as well as the consultants but also a caveat on there as part of the motion that this board also um, is, as part of it mo its motion um, will avail itself of the opportunity of the consultants having heard the concerns at Park at uh, Wachusett and Hillside about possible reestablishment of that um, bus stop and we will receive feedback on that in the future so the main thrust of the motion is a to provide the approval they need to move forward and B just to add uh, the, the fruits of the conversation we had about possibly um, adding that back and that the uh, consultants and Mr. Amstutz will get back to us on that question. Yeah. So I hope that's not uh, too convoluted. No, it, it makes okay? sense. I mean, it will be a little challenging to repeat back, you know, uh, but I got what it means, you know, so, you know, and a second from Mr. Hurd. Um, so, so that's the motion and second. More discussion? And for Ashley's sake, it's a move approval um, on the proposed changes supplied um, as well as a will report on uh, the board's recommendation, the board's request for consideration and recommendation on reestablishing the uh, Wachusett and Hillside Ave. Stop. Thank you. Gotcha. You know, so, and I guess before um, we take the vote, I just want to ask Mr. Amstis if he wanted to say anything or had any comments. Um, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think um, I provided all the materials, or as, as many you know, backup materials as I felt was uh, was helpful for the board in looking at this and making a decision. Um, you know, we've been working with the T for uh, many months on this, and I think um, partly because of the complexity of these changes, that um, if they had approved, if if um, the 78 uh, or park circle at Eastern Ave stop was eliminated. That means the 78 would not have gone around the circle, which it, it again came in, uh, came out of the public outreach and input that that was going to be a hardship for a number of people, especially a few people with certain disabilities. Um, and so I will just uh, agree or, or restate the appreciation for the T and the, um, their consultants, McMahon in um, you know putting that one back on the table or as a stop um, the park circle at eastern ave and also the one at oakland ave and and park ave um, certainly responding to the concerns from staff and also from the public about the uh, loss of those of those stops I, you know i think in general there was um, the public didn't want any stops to be removed but you know certain stops as has been mentioned either have some challenges with simply making accessible or with the pedestrian or traffic safety of where they are, like the one at Wachusett and Park Ave. So, you know, those those are uh, much more difficult to be able to uh, retain. So I think that, um, you know, I think what the proposal that came back uh, was, you know, much improved from what we'd originally discussed uh, several months ago. Thank you, Sam. And once again, I mean, I, I thought your survey was, was great. And, and I like the way that you present all the data that you get from it. So very much appreciate that. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'd like to thank Mr. Amstutz for the, um, for the memo. And I mentioned a reference he made. That was my misreading of his memo. His memo was right on the 62 and 76. I was reading inbound on the 62, 76, or the, or the outbound map uh, as if it applied to everything. So uh, I don't want the, anybody to think that there was an error by Mr. Amstutz on the, error, uh, on the uh, memo. It was my interpretation of it. So. Um, thank you and for, for the work that you have done in, in, uh, in keeping us informed. I'll just say very briefly, Mr. Hurd is the, the current knowledge on, on these bus routes. I, I have the institutional knowledge on this, <laughs> having grown up in the Heights and being a frequent rider of now the old Route 80 for the Almont bus uh, from Almont to Harvard Square. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you. So I guess the... You were almost threw him under the bus, but you threw him there, and then you got out there and you stopped the bus. I, I don't, yeah, yeah, well, I, I, I felt like I, I, I didn't want to leave it out there. It's all right here. Great. All right. That's, 
Excellent. So, uh, okay. So, on a motion to approve uh, the the, um, the proposal, um, and but to leave ourselves open to the possibility of some change made you know, on on the watch this in Hillside stop um, by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. You know, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Nana spoke. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. To Thank item, you. Item, item 14. Um, presentation on the age and dementia friendly action plan with Christine Shah from the Arlington Council of Aging and Caitlin Coyle and from the UMass Center for Social and Demographic Research in Aging. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having the Council on Aging on the agenda tonight, and thank you for um, your attention um, to this um, agenda item. Um, my name is Christine Shaw. I know most of you, but I'm the Executive Director of the Council on Aging. Um, and we're here tonight. It's a pretty momentous um, occasion. We're here to share um, our age and dementia-friendly action plan with you. Um, I want to thank the Council on Aging board members that are on um, the Zoom virtually supporting us and also all of the COA staff and everybody that's helped us get to this point with the Age and Dementia Friendly Action Plan. Um, it's been a labor of love and a long road. It began over five years ago um, when our board of volunteers began, began researching and applying to be considered as an AARP age-friendly community. Um, in 2017, um, AARP did designate Arlington as an age-friendly community, which was wonderful. Um, in 2018, we had a kickoff luncheon and we began um, an age-friendly survey for the community. Um, over, over the years after that, which included a pandemic, as we all know, um, we, we, con we really just continued taking more information from the public. Um, and then when we got to the point where we were ready to write our action plan, um, we hired Caitlin Coyle, who is here tonight. She's a research fellow at the Center for Social and Demographic Research and Aging at UMass Boston. Um, they, I believe, were really the experts in age-friendly and in the action plan writing um, and interpreti interpreting the data that we had collected. Um, she recommended at that point that we hold some additional focus groups since it was now post or during the COVID pandemic. It was different times than when we had originally um, began getting the information from the Arlington residents for the plan. So um, I am happy tonight to have Caitlin here with us. She has a brief presentation to um, outline the age and dementia friendly action plan and what we're really um, hoping for is the select board's um, support in moving forward so that we can file this with um, the AARP and the um, Dementia Friendly Massachusetts and then just keep pressing forward in all of the age friendly and dementia friendly work in Arlington. Okay, thank I you. Steve Caitlin is on. <laughs> Yes, good evening. Um, for some reason, my camera is not being detected by Zoom, so I will not be using my camera. But I will share my screen um, so that I can share with you some highlights from the work that we've been doing um, in Arlington. Okay, great. Uh, so. Um, thank you, Christine, for the introduction. I'm Caitlin Coyle. I'm a research faculty um, at UMass Boston in gerontology. We um, have been around since 2012 and have worked um, directly with over 70 cities and towns in Massachusetts doing um, very similar projects to this in terms of helping communities collect information from their older residents and developing plans for ensuring that their communities are um, conducive to people aging, not just well, but also actively and engaged. 
So I um, wanted to just really thank Christine, who's been just a great leader um, on the town side in terms of supporting the work and engaging her council members, um, the Arlington Seniors Association and the volunteers. Um, so it was really uh, wonderful to work with her. Um, and I'm gonna just sort of remind us all what an age-friendly community is. Um, and, and, and Christine alluded to the AARP process by which a community becomes age-friendly, but um, the whole sort of thing started by the World Health Organization uh, in 2002, recognizing population aging and a desire for people to age in their community, gathered experts from around the world and sort of asked them to put forth recommendations um, for what would, what would it take for a community to be um, an age-friendly place. Um, and the way they define that is a place that optimizes not just opportunities for health and participation and security, but to also ensure that the uh, ability to achieve quality of life and have dignity as people age as well is, is what constitutes an age-friendly community. Um, and so they came up with these sort of eight different domains of an age-friendly community, which, which guides the work um, that's happening in communities all around the world, including Arlington, um, to sort of um, take a look at their community as it relates to each of these domains, uh, understand what their strengths are and identify places where they can do better and put together action plans like the one that we developed for the town of Arlington um, to guide uh, residents, volunteers, and stakeholders to take action um, to move things forward. You'll notice um, on this flower image that a number of these domains are very broad and they don't, um, you know, transportation, housing, you know, communication and information, it's not specific. There are all things that are important to all residents, I should say. So the rationale for an age-friendly community is really about um, supporting people as they uh, age, but it also, um, there's a lot of value in these kinds of initiatives for the town um, at large. Uh, Christine mentioned you know, they're also uh, pursuing the dementia friendly um, designation, which is goes hand in hand with age friendly and is really um, oh, as they're making their plans and as they're putting the plans into action. It's not um, just thinking about aging broadly, but also recognizing that um, people who are living with um, Cognitive change and their families um, have may have a very different experience than those um, without um, cognitive change happening. And so really wanting to put a focus on their age-friendly initiative to also think about um, how, 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 are the, how are the changes that we're making also conducive um, and responsive to people living with dementia and those who care for them. So this is just a, um, a, a definition of dementia-friendly from the Dementia-Friendly Massachusetts. I should say also that um, in 2018, Governor Baker declared Massachusetts um, an age-friendly state and actually applied for designation for the state, encouraging all cities and towns um, to do this work. And so, um, and there's also this dementia-friendly Massachusetts, uh, which is a statewide initiative to support dementia-friendly communities. So, it, um, just another sort of kudos to Arlington for and Christine and her and her her group um, for pursuing this and and for getting this far because it is something that's being recognized um, statewide as as, as important. Um, I'll go ahead and skip that. So Christine also mentioned the timeline, which is that they have been accepted into these networks. Um, they conducted the needs assessment and then they uh, reached out to us in 2021 to really sort of um, take all the information that they had already gathered, engage some additional folks and put together an action plan that will be delivered to AARP, which will then kickstart an implementation process, um, which is essentially just um, sort of uh, a signal to AARP that you've got this plan and that you're also um, plan to actually taking action on that plan. So we did review the 2019 survey that Christine and her group um, conducted. Uh, we reviewed a number of documents um, that the town um, had recently completed that might have intersect with some things like housing, transportation, outdoor spaces. We conducted a demographic profile using American Community Survey data. And then as Christine alluded to, we did engage in five sort of working planning sessions with stakeholders and residents that was specifically focused on the five areas that you see listed here, wanting to really um, engage them in this process because in order for this to be successful, um, there needs to be people who, who, who are, take some ownership over it and are um, involved. 
and, and coming up with the ideas. And so we were um, lucky to facilitate these in person. Um, we ended up with about 32 people overall who participated, as I mentioned, residents and stakeholders alike, who basically came up with a laundry list of ideas for action that was then refined into the plan that um, you all received and that we completed. Um, I have a couple of demographic slides that, um, you know, essentially just re referencing the fact that um, adults 60 plus in Arlington outnumber residents under age 18. They make up um, almost a quarter of your population currently, and that projections that we have available to us from MAPC and UMass, uh, the UMass Donahue Institute suggest that, that the trends um, in terms of the, the size of the older adult population in Arlington will continue to grow. Um, looking out to 2030 and 2035. So these are just four different projections that take into di account different assumptions, um, but the trend overall is an upward uh, trajectory. This is in part because we know people are living longer, uh, but also because they'd like to stay in their community as long as they can. Um, and a couple of, uh, I'll, you know, I'm gonna skip, gonna skip. I, just, I wanted to highlight the fact that, you know, um, there's a lot of diversity within the older adult population that makes it important um, to recognize about Arlington. So 29% um, of residents age 65 and older live alone, um, which sort of signals what kinds of things they might need to have available to them in order to remain living independently and, and comfortably um, as they get older. Um, a number of uh, residents age 65 and older reportedly having at least one disability. So here, this is the 65 plus population. You've got about 24% who have at least one disability. Those are sort of physical mobility limitations and things of that nature. Um, and so it's not just about, uh, it's, not a, uh, it's not definitely not a homogeneous group by any stretch of the imagination and that it comes thinking about these kinds of things is important as we think about designing a community that is inclusive to people of all ages and abilities. Um, and then lastly, um, this is looking at uh, median household income by age. So essentially you've got 6% um, of residents who are age 45 to 64 um, living on under $25,000 a year compared to 24% um, of your older adults in Arlington. Uh, not entirely surprising given that many older adults are living on a fixed income, um, but as we know, costs continue to rise and that um, puts people at a real risk for economic insecurity um, as they're wanting to stay in the community as they age. So I wanted to, I, I'm not gonna go into a, a lot of the recommendations specifically, but I wanted to just sort of give some highlights and, and really also just um, reiterate to the board and, and to um, the community that this action plan is by no means prescriptive and it's intended to be a guiding document. Christine is lucky to have, uh, Arlington is lucky to have such a great, great group of resident volunteers and staff um, and stakeholders who were involved in these conversations. And it was very clear to us that there's a lot already going on in Arlington and that part of this work is to um, try to harness some of what's going on, communicate about it, make sure that older adults are part of those conversations. And so um, I wanted to just sort of iterate that this document will be used by the groups um, that Christine is, is leading to think about where can they affect change as it relates to age and dementia friendliness. Um, so it's not like a checklist. They don't have to complete everything that's in the plan. It's really a set of ideas that come, came directly from um, community resident input. And so it's intended to be a guiding document, a living document, something that can be used um, for planning and, um, and, and generating ideas for the future. So the, the plan um, that you received, you know, it's sort of, it goes through each of the domains. Um, highlights sort of what's the overarching goal that we're trying to accomplish and then lays out a number of specific action items that are both, I would say, small and large in nature. Um, the idea is that there are some little things that can be done now and there's many larger things that require advocacy and planning. Um, but really it's about um, rethink, as, we, as, as Arlington plans for the future, having a group like the one that Christine is leading, but also the town more broadly, really understanding that as we plan, we have to think about it from the aging lens. It's important to think about how the changes that we're making um, impact people who are on fixed incomes, who have mobility challenges, um, who may be relatively isolated to family, this kind of thing that we know um, occurs more prevalently in old age. So 
it is really, as I said, a pretty comprehensive plan, this transportation mobility, again, number of goals, specific action items. And the idea is that the, the groups of residents and stakeholders who have been involved, as well as others that will become involved, will um, help facilitate progress towards some of these goals and, and actions. You'll also note that um, any item that has a purple D next to it is for uh, the dementia friendly piece and it's a specific way to delineate um, our progress towards dementia friendliness as well. So this plan in theory will be submitted to ARP, will be sort of on file with them and then they'll support um, the town and Christine and her, her folks as they move through the um, age friendly action process. Um, so that is uh, essentially it from me, but I wanted to yeah share this, uh, commend Christine and, and just really the wonderful the wonderful resident. We do this work a lot and we go into communities of all kinds and it was very clear to me that um, Arlington not only has a lot going on from a town-wide perspective, but the folks who were at the table who were engaged in these conversations were very dedicated, very thoughtful, um, very motivated to continue the work. So I think um, you guys, Christine is set up for success in terms of being able to move this work forward. And, and lastly, um, you know, just recognizing that the whole point of agent dementia friendly work is to engage the community in taking action. And so it's not a measure, it, you know, success is not measured by how many things you get done. Um, it's really about having the conversation of raising awareness about aging in the community um, and working together towards, um, you know, more inclusive practices. So. Thank you for your time this evening, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions or take any comments if there are any. Well, thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Ina. And, and so, um, I, and do you have a preference for how we address you, uh, Ms. Mrs. Doctor? <laughs> no, you can call me Caitlin. Thank you. Okay, no problem, Caitlin. Thank you. You know, so um, I open it up to my colleagues, Mr. Hummus. First, thank you, Mr. Chair. First, a question: um, Do uh, may, this might be from Ms. Shaw through you? Um, do uh, would it be a motion for receipt or approval? Uh, be ne approval. necessary? Is this uh, what, just what's the desired we, action here? I think we need to make a motion to approve the. Um, is it action plan? Action plan. Oh, is it it friendly? I'm just trying to you know try to get the right verb here. Maybe Mr. Heim, do you have a? Thank you, yes, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. I, I think. Adoption or approval, either one is fine. Because huh. they want to get it to AARP. Yeah, 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 excellent. So I would be happily move move uh, move adoption, and um, and thank you, thank you, Michelle, for your excellent leadership. Um, by the way, it's been great to see you recently out in a couple of community events. So I appreciate your visibility there and representing the town so very well. Um, and and thank you, um, Caitlin, for this excellent plan, this excellent report. I thought that the demographics were particularly striking and attention getting. That we, we need to see where we're headed with the, with the, the population. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing that I'm only three years from what is considered an older adult, <laughs> to my alarm. Um, but, but you know, that's the reality. That's all of us. And, um, and I do want to make Marlington my home. And I think that a lot of people do as we, as we age in yeah. place. Um, and the, the income demographics are particularly striking. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of work to do, with, particularly with respect to housing, um, to really grapple with this. Because if we don't, I think that we're going. To, it's going to be much more difficult for many of the people who live here and love love living here to stay here. So I, I think this is a, uh, these are some important guideposts, and I hope that as we look at our zoning and we look at our affordable housing and we look at our transportation uh, options, that we take this to heart. Uh, for this population. Thank you. Mr. Helmet. Anyone else? Mr. Hurd? I'll second the motion. I just I also want to thank all of you for your, the participation in this and all the work that's been this this document. I mean, the amount of work hours that it takes to put together a document like this, I don't even want to comprehend, but it's seeing the goals in front of us and the action items, it really helps us as we create policy to see areas that we need to work on, there's certain action items that we can say, all right, we're already working on this, this, and this, but it looks like we're a little, we're a little light on these particular items. So this is very helpful for us um, in, in a community like Arlington where we've asked 
often and will ask very soon our seniors to help fund some of a lot of programs that are geared towards either youth or, or um, our schools and whatnot. And we talk about overrides and, and uh, debt exclusions. It is important for us to make sure that we are giving back to the same population that has supported certainly my children, the children of Arlington, and make sure that they have everything they need um, in life to be happy and strong and healthy. So this is very encouraging to see this, and I look forward to the implementation. Thank you, sir. Mr. Discorsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and I, I want to thank Caitlin. I want to thank Ms. Shaw for the uh, excellent presentation tonight and, and all the work that, that, that has been done to date. Um, we attend a number of the Council on Aging meetings, and this is, it has been a topic that has come up. So I also want to thank members of the Council on Aging who I think have signed on through Zoom and, and uh, have watched for all, for all the, their work and uh, seeing what they, they have done to the, through, through uh, the meetings I've attended. It's truly impressive. And I, I do want to say really impressed with the, the, the breadth of the, the action plan between housing and transportation, but just social and communication issues that are so important, whether it's for caregivers, um, whether it's the need for home safety assessments um, that are in there, because uh, to, to Mr. Helm's point, 90% nine, of the survey respondents said that they would like to age in place in Arlington. Um, so there, there is, is going to be a need um, for that and, and in the communications and partnerships. And I really like the way this is, is so well thought out and, and um, just the work you did uh, on the report through the document review, this, this four or five plans that we adopt here, um, whether it's sustainable transportation, master plan, housing production plan, those were all considered. And sometimes we think we're just approving things to put it out there and it's, it's all separate, but it really was incorporated into your review and to your recommendations. So th thank you for that and, and for all the great work. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. All set? Right. Well, I, I think this is really a really great action plan. And, 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 um, and although you say we don't have to do them all, I like to see us try to do them all because they all really do seem uh, very worthy of pursuit. I mean, uh, the, I like the one on uh, developing a database, I mean, of uh, email addresses I mean, uh, for everyone. I think it was over 55. I mean, the zoning changes was um, an interesting one. I mean, for especially the affordable housing overlay. You know, I think it'll come down to how we define affordable. You know, but I mean, I, I think there's a lot of interest in the community for doing something along those lines. I mean, the snow removal uh, recommendation I thought was was very good, and and um, and uh, and the the resident parking stickers. I mean, that might be something for the um, the folks working on um, parking on this board to think about you know so so um, so yes thank you for, for a great list of um of um i think um actionable action items you know so so um i am um, yeah i'm thrilled I mean, and looking forward to incorporating this into the um the catalog of action plans that we have so um with that um i think we'll take a vote you know, well, actually, on a motion, we need to approve um, this action plan by Mr. Helmuth and a second by Mr. Hurd. You know. right. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's your name is Phil. Great. So, thank you. On to thank AAR. you for the support. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. So, um, nice little segue into the overnight permit parking pilot forum that we had last Thursday. Uh, so, so I'll just start by saying that it was, um, it was a really good forum. I mean, and Mr. Helmuth was there, and I think he will agree that uh, there was a nice turnout. I, mean, I think uh, over 80 people registered for it, and, and I think I saw maybe mid-50s at any given time uh, there. Uh, and and um, it was mostly um, us listening to the, the 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 residents I mean he, they asked a few questions and we made it very clear to them very soon I mean, that that we, we this is ground floor I mean, and so we weren't coming to them with a plan we were really listening to concerns I me mean, that uh, we did want to 
we're seriously thinking about changing things, you know, uh, in the way we approach parking. And, and so it wasn't really a matter of whether we do it, it's really a matter of how we do it. And then we were looking at to them for, for input. Uh, it was hard, I would say it's kind of evenly balanced. I mean, I wasn't really like doing a survey because the whole point is not really to you know, get a vote. It's really a matter of determining how best to move forward. But it was pretty evenly split, I would say, in terms of people who supported doing it you know, versus those who maybe were um, more towards keeping the status quo. And I guess if I had to say it tipped one way, it probably tipped more towards I mean, us doing something. Uh, uh, but, um, but, um, but there were some strong feelings there that were voiced, I, I thought, just very... Um, civilly, you know, so it was a, a yes, yeah, it, it was a good, it was a good forum. We ran a little long. I think we were there for uh, 105 minutes instead of 90, you know. Uh, uh, so um, got a lot of good ideas I mean, from the forum itself, and I sent you all the link, I mean, to the the comments. I mean, so we got a lot there still. Um, is that I I need to process a whole bunch of it I mean, and. Believe it or not, since I'm not going anywhere for the July 4th weekend, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to uh, catching up and putting, putting some things together you know, and, and coming up with um, something to present to uh, Mr. Corsi first, you know, and then and the rest of you maybe in July. And that's a little ambitious. I mean, it may end up being August, you know, but certainly I think we want to go back to the residents with something I mean, by October at the latest. The only thing that makes me not say September is that, you know, we're going to have that Tom Day thing, you know, and that may start taking up a lot of time and bandwidth, you know, um, in August and September. So, so um, with that, I'll turn to Mrs. Corsi to add more. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and thank you for, for coordinating the forum, and, and uh, Chief Flaherty attended, Officer Rateau attended, and, and uh, I, I think that the Chair, it was it was exactly right on the description. There were differing views, but it was I thought it was a great discussion um, that that took place. And you know whether you agreed or disagreed with with what people saying, they they provided us a lot to think about. And, and just in terms of the scope of what you and I ultimately will will be requesting uh, of the board on on a, on a full vote. But it's it's uh, it was really interesting. Um, you know, sometimes there was a lot of detail that, that um, was provided. Other were general concerns, but I thought all the comments were helpful. Um, and um, it just, again, the last time we talked about this pilot, we talked about the more you look into it, the more you realize that how many facets there are to it. And, and that's, that's what we need to think about. I, I will <laughs> confess I will not be processing anything over the July 4th weekend <laughs> on, on the pilot program, but I will get back to it later in July. And, and I want to thank the public for, for attending and, and, um, and, and feedback that I've received since the, that, that night as well, which has been helpful. Great. So um, questions? All right. and, um, yeah. Just to further comment on the quality of the civic discourse, I, I thought, I, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. DeCourcy for organizing the forum. I thought it was excellent. I noticed that many people there thanked you for listening, you know, for the board, to the board for listening. And I think it was a real, uh, that was very much, people felt very much heard. I listened, even though I wasn't participating as a board member, and I learned a lot. Uh, I was just very struck by, it seemed to me that people, even those who disagree with each other, were listening to one another. And they would reference each other, and they were appreciating kind of the nuance and the complexity of another person's point of view. In my mind, that is a model of how civic discourse uh, could happen. I'd personally like to see more of that in town meeting. Uh, I thought it was a really good example of, of how it can be done when people just listen to each other's stories and respectfully. So it was a good evening for me, and I'm very glad that we had it. Well, thank you. Thank you. So. Um, with that, uh, we will move on to the next agenda item, and I need to pull that one up. It's the liaisons, assignments, you know, so uh, we're just going to run down this list, and I think, and I think there are going to be very few changes, and, uh, 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 but I just want to make sure that people are happy with where they are. If they want to change something, then now's the time to say it. And, um, but it's not the only time. 
And so if you want to say something later on, and um, we can certainly revisit this. And uh, so I take it, Mr. Helm is going to want to stay with the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Hurd um, with the Committee on Tourism and Economic Development. And, uh, Mr. Helmuth on Youth Health and Safety. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hurd on Battle Road 2025. All right. And, uh, Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Hurd on CBD, CDBG. Okay. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy on Council of Aging. And uh, so my understanding is that Mr. Helmuth is now doing clean energy future. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Right, yep. Fine. No, I yeah. discussed that one with the chair. Yeah. And um, HPEC. I'll stay with it, although I don't know if it's staying with me. You know, so now that we have a new housing production plan, and, uh, there haven't been any meetings scheduled, so so it, I'll, I'll keep it, but it may open up a little bit of bandwidth for me. And, um, and Information Technology Advisory Committee? Health. It's been inactive, but yeah. Okay, if it, fine. If it comes back, um, that'd be fine. And Local Emergency Planning Committee, Mr. Helmuth and Mr. Corsi? Right. Okay. Uh, and Long Range Planning, and so I have spoken with Ms. Mahan about this. And so uh, my burning curiosity about what's going on there, especially when I was I mean, running and I could attend the meetings, I mean, um, makes me want to participate. And also, um, it, there is going to be a big challenge, I mean, and so, so I think I might want to, if to the extent I feel comfortable, I mean, want to input on this. But Mrs. Mahan will back me up, meaning that if, if it turns out that I just can't handle that meeting at that time. I'm an early riser, you know, but sometimes, I mean, one day leads to another day that doesn't really allow for an o'clock meeting. So, so we'll see how it goes. I mean, but this, of course, we will stay. Um, thank you. Uh, and um, marijuana study committee. I mean, that's me. And once again, I think it might have run its course. I mean, now that we have three licenses, so I've seen more bandwidth opening up for me. Um, Parking implementation governance committee, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, I'll stay on that. I mean, we can just update the name of it to the Park Advisory Committee. Okay. Oh, it's not, it's not a Park Advisory? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fine. I'm not sure what the Parking <clears throat> Subcommittee is. Mr. DeCourcy you may know more than me, but whatever it is, we don't meet off this. All right. All right. <laughs> Maybe you should meet over the July 4th week. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Rainbow Commission. So, I talked to Mr. Hurd. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Hellman. First time, I mean, I thought I was gonna make it through a whole meeting, you know. <laughs> so, so, uh, I'd be happy to do it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, and, and so now that we going through this again and seeing that, I mean, I have less. I mean, you, we had agreed that we kind of tag team on it. We could still do that if you like, but, but I'm happy to keep it. I'd be happy if you would, or okay. the member. Just, um, I've got my name on a lot of things here, and I just want to be careful not to overcommit. Sure. I would be very happy to stand in if you are not available. Sure, me. sure, sure, sure. You know, I'll have to, you know, they'll be disappointed because I kind of told them that, but they'll, they'll I, I um, think that you're very well served by your continued liaison, <laughs> and, I, and I will be happy to sure. be there if, I, sure. if yeah. you can't be. So, um, school committee liaison, Mr. Corsi? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And scholarship working program, Mr. Hurd and Mr. Corsi? All right, all right. Uh, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> I said, I don't it's know what that is. Yeah. 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 Even at the July 4th uh, yeah. <laughs> project when we clean up this list of committees. Yeah, <laughs> all right, okay, well, that's true. I, I For somebody, somebody. Yeah, yeah all right, yeah, well, you know, yeah. uh, snow and ice. This is my hot and <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, it snows. <laughs> There's ice. You know, it's, it's ice you That's know. on my report. Yeah, well, we, we, but we can maybe like help out with them um, on the action plan, like getting businesses to get that stuff out of the way, I mean, so that not only seniors, but just anyone can like walk down some of the sidewalks. Um, uh, Sunnyside Avenue neighbors. That hasn't been in a while. Okay, so we can. It hasn't been active, but. Just, you can just leave it there in case DCR heats up again all right, all right. with David Morgan out of planning because I know he's, he's been down there a lot recently. All right. You know, so TAC. So Mr. Hurd, you know, I'm on there representing the Chamber of Commerce and you're up on there representing the board. Would you like to swap? So I was going to just, by swap you mean you just take over the... 
It's a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I was going to because I said, I mean, I think I've been the TAC liaison since I've been on the board, and I've never been invited or asked to go to a TAC meeting. Yeah. And I think you are much more involved in TAC than than me, so I'm happy to give that up to you, Mr. Okay. Chair. All right. And, and if we did swap, you, you get a vote because the the, the I, mean, I get to vote as the liaison from from the Chamber of Commerce, but I think from the chair, from the select board, you don't get to vote. So, so think about it, you know. So, okay, so then we'll swap me in, and then, and then you'll just, you. yeah, <laughs> right. Um, tree committee, uh, Mr. Helmuth? Tree committee? Tree committee? Yeah, sure, I'll take the tree committee. Okay, so, so then me, so Mr. Hurt will take the tree committee, so, you know. And uh, Using an advisory board that no longer exists, but it's going to be replaced by the Young Arlington Collaborative, and so, so um, I would like to do that, you know. And the uh, Remote Participation Study Committee, yeah. uh, and well, a committee that I, you're going to hate me for this, uh, for thinking about even adding one. But I noticed that ABAC doesn't have a liaison. I mean, the the Bicycle Advisory Committee was that intentional or just well, usually. We we, we, there's a liaison from the board when either town meeting or the actual committee creates a right. position for someone from the board. Right. So, so then I don't think ABAC has, has done one. that. All right. Or Thank you might want to follow up with them and find out if that's something that they'd like well, to include. Well, I can look. Yeah. And, 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 and if they and, say, uh, yeah, then yeah, you can. And, and see. Okay. All right. Your right. chair, you can do whatever you want. Uh, <clears throat> Well, what I, what I want to do is check in with folks and make sure <laughs> that that it's okay instead of just just um, yeah, doing right. stuff, you know, like a loose cannon, you know. Uh, uh, so, um, all right. So I think we're all done here. Cool. All right. So the last, well, the next. Okay, there are three more items, but they're all short. Okay. Uh, goal setting meeting. You know. So, so um. I think if we want to have Mr. Pooler there, I mean, and, and I'm going to have the meet. If we want to aim for having a meeting in July, and want Mr. Pooler there, it, it would probably be a Tuesday or Thursday. I mean, and Thursday would work better for me than Tuesdays. You know, I mean, yes, Mr. Hunt. I don't know if Mr. Pooler already communicated this, but Mr. Pooler is out July 21st to 29th, okay. so it would have to be a different week than that. Well, it is important to have Mr. Pooler there. <laughs> so. Right. Right. So our, our, our next meeting is on the 18th. I mean, we could try to have it before then, or we could do it in August. Yeah. I, I just wonder, Mr. Chairman, that if maybe we pick a couple of dates, but I mean, there's a, there's a fair amount of work Mr. Pooler needs to do to, to, to so update August the goals right. document for us. So, I mean, if that works for him, um, fine. I don't know if it, I know. If, that time frame towards the end of the month doesn't, but um, okay. I don't know if, if we pick a date in July or August and see what he thinks he can produce before that day, unless, unless you know if, 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 if he feels that either time is fine for him. But yeah, no, I have not spoken with okay. him about it, so with the understanding that he would need to do more work, you know, then maybe we'll aim for uh, early, early August, mm -hmm. you know, assuming folks are going to be around, because I know August is when people tend to head out, you know. Any reservations? I guess the first week of August. That's fine for me. First week of August? And I, yeah. I'm, I don't know my schedule yet, but I will in a week or so. Okay. I'm planning to do a fair bit of travel in August. Okay. So I could tentatively put some on. All right. All right. And, and, and maybe, so he's through, through the 29th, so that's pretty much the end of July. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll um, as soon as you know, please yes, let me know. I and, um, and then, Sorry about that. And, and then, well, no, no need to apologize to me. And, and, and maybe I can have a talk with the town manager and see if he could pull something off. I mean, before he leaves in July. All right. So, um, so um, you may be seeing some emails from Ashley. I mean, as we firm this up, you know. So, okay. You know, and the item 18 correspondence received manager and director of planning and community development positions for Mr. Wagner and request for memorial for Nancy I'm sorry I just Ortwin. Ortwin thank you um, by um, Kelly Mart Martin um, I'll move the receipt of 18 and 
Move receipt and referral of 19 to the Public Memorials Committee. Second. Okay. Comments, questions? Yes. Since we're making a referral to the Public Memorials <laughs> Committee, um, I might remind us all that we have another pending referral to follow up on them, uh, the matter of um, Mr. Stevens' original warrant article proposal that was converted to a, a referral by committee uh, about uh, Maliazzi Way. So it would be a good time to follow up with them just to you know, make sure that's on their radar as well. Okay. So we, mm -hmm. did, we did send it to them. And I don't, I don't know if it actually happened, but that was a I believe that was a real. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was wondering about that too. I was wondering if Mr. Uh, Schlickman had to come back um, to us with it, but yeah, he asked me about it recently, and I said I'd follow up, and I forgot to mention it. So okay. I thought it was at least partially related. To okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, worth mentioning it since no. we were making a referral. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yes, uh, Ms. Mahan. Um, in, 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 I heard from town meeting, um, in, in maybe you can follow up on this, and I, ju I just want to make sure we're proceeding appropriately, um, as we all do. Um, some people were questioning if the suggested memoriam um, was the ideal one. So would it be, uh, and I'm not trying to be sarcastic or anything, but like, like, you know, like some people said, oh, it'll be funny that it's a small little thing and both signs bump into each other. But then other people said, no, if you want to do a public memoriam, you know. It, um, so uh, do you want to find out or do you know, I got a sense from town meeting that they wanted to refer the matter to the public memorial committee for consideration of some memorial versus the two signs that are going to abut each other in that one way. Or am I? Or do you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I think, I think it's a good suggestion. Ms. Ms. Mahad, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go back and look at the tape. Right? I don't want to not refer it. Yeah, but, yeah, no, I think we, I should, we should be clear or asking the committee to consider. So, yeah. Yeah. So let, let me kind of withdraw that and, and for some further research because I think it's a really good point. Yeah. I just okay. want to, yeah, you know, just, just so we have some clarity. And yeah. and I have no. Yeah. 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 No. I think it's it's, it's whatever good, yeah. the phrase is that I'm trying to think. Yeah. Of. Yeah. No. I don't gotcha. Know if it's gotcha. Say. Yeah. We're good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for your tolerance. Oh no 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 problem. Went off the yeah. rails there for a bit. <laughs> oh, no 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 problem. I mean, I'm, I am. Um, I haven't quite formulated the thoughts I have about the public morals committee, and so so I'm just. Um, yeah. I, by my word that I use a lot, I mean, I'm intensely curious about that committee, you know, <laughs> and what, what, what it does. And cause we, we refer a lot of things, you know, and, and then, and then what, you know? So I just kind of want to know um, what happens and when and how. Uh, so um, I lost track. We need to vote. Yeah, no, so I think Mr. Hurd did Mr. the motion Hurd, seconded. and seconded by Ms. Mahan. And, uh, Mr. Hurd? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Yes. All right, new business. Uh, Ms. Meyer? No new business. Thank you. Uh, just one minor thing for the board's future attention. Uh, myself and Deputy Town Council uh, Cunningham are getting prepared to go to a uh, mediation or a court uh, guided arbitration, not arbitration, I'm sorry, basically a settlement conference regarding the ITRA matter um, that's coming up uh, in mid-July. Uh, we'll probably have some kind of update uh, in advance of the select board's uh, July meeting, but um, we may want to post an executive session on that matter if the board is interested in the outcome. Um, the board isn't necessarily, well, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. All right. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple of things. First, a uh, week ago Saturday, the chair and I attended the reopening of the, the Reservoir Beach, and, mm. and uh, it was truly impressive. Good. It was a little chilly that day, but there was a good crowd. People actually swimming, which I, yeah. I was surprised at. But I, I drove by the, there this weekend, and, and there was a really good crowd there. And so I, I want to thank Joe Connolly for all the work that he's done, Park and Recreation Commission, and the Conservation Commission, who had a very big role in um, the, the, the uh, improvements there, and it really is impressive between the um, park and the, the beach itself. They brought in sand from Cape Cod, um, and they have a picnic area. It's really, it, I think it's gonna get a lot of use this summer. I think that's great. Um, the other thing is, and we didn't have an opportunity to say anything to her because she hasn't been before us in a while, but uh, Andrea Nikolai, this week is her last week with the town. Uh, she's a library director and she's going to 
head up the Albany library system, which is a much bigger system, but uh, she did a wonderful job as, a, as our library director and increased circulation, did a lot of innovative things during the pandemic. I just want to wish her well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh -huh. um, I guess I just have one new business, because I think my other new business, I've spoken one time to one colleague <laughs> on any one matter. I mean, that has to do with the um, MBTA. Um, uh, there are quite a few cities and towns um, that have been taking votes, registering their city council or select boards. Um, just uh, dismay for the reduction and or elimination of, of bus services that, that the T is proposing. Um, and that's separate and, you know, germane to Newton and Lexington and Belmont and that. But I have gotten from quite a few people about Arlington because, you know, there's two bus road, routes being eliminated, the 80, and I don't, I don't have it all in front of me. And, and everything else is getting reduced as well as um, this, this has been a longstanding issue, and I'd like to put it on the table to maybe actually tackle it. You know, we can discuss it at our goals meeting. But um, unfortunately, from uh, machinations from many, many years ago, Arlington really got, in my opinion, an, a truly unfair MBTA assessment. Um, and it was just politics way back when. Um, and again, looking at our operating budget and a, a pending override in 23-24 and, and trying to look at everything we can, um, I would like to... Um, and I've spoken to the town manager, um, Mr. Pooler, about this. He, he's the per person who provided me the four or five assessments that I asked. Um, he went on each individual community's charity sheet to see what it was. <clears throat> and I'd like to, um, in the spirit of everything that's happening right now, I think we might be able to get some leeway. But Arlington, this year, our assessment is $3,093,000 and change. And all we have are buses and they're getting eliminated and reduced for that assessment. Um, the town of Lexington's assessment is 750000 which is where I think we should be in terms of transportation. Arlington and Lexington pretty much have the same. We don't have any rail, we don't have any you know, electric cars or anything like that. Now if you look at um, Braintree, which is part of the reason our assessment is so high along with Quincy, and they have you know, a T in there, train service, and much more transportation. Braintree's assessment is 842000 to our $3.1 million. And Quincy, which is, has everything in terms of services, soup to nuts, uh, their assessment's at $2.1 million. And we're at three point one. million. So that, that's woefully inadequate. So what I'd like to, what I've asked the, the manager to do is to... Um, and I didn't ask for tonight's meeting because I think it's too ambitious. It was just, you know, it's a lot of information. I did ask for these facts and figures because he told me it wouldn't be a cumbersome ta uh, task to do. But to provide the board with, um, I've, I've gone to two of the, the hearings and I've seen different routes proposed to be eliminated, reduced, et cetera. But to provide the board exactly what, you know, the town of Arlington is losing. We're definitely not gaining anything. Um, and then um, have the board have a discussion. And uh, th I'd like to tackle this issue of this unfair assessment that, that the town of Arlington has for the, the MBTA. I don't know if we can, I know there's a hearings coming up in the state house within the next four weeks. Um, uh, maybe it's something whether through after a discussion from the board, if there's an appetite for it that, um, how can we address our unfair reduction? One thing I was thinking was um, to propose either through the board, through the town, or through our legislative delegation that um, Arlington actually get a true MBTA assessment for the amount of services that it's getting, which also right now is a decrease um, percentage of service loss. Um, and or we could ask um, our legislative delegation to um, file legislation to um, create a quick study. I'm not into studies just to have a study and it puts something off, but this would be something that would be a comparative study um, regarding the uh, assessment and formula um, 
A, the initial what Arlington should be and B, what it should be uh, taking into account the loss of service um, to, to, to Arlington customers. So I just wanted to bring that up into new business just so everybody can start th thinking about it and ruminating on it. Um, you know, we really should be down, we should be paying definitely closer to what a Lexington's paying, which is pretty much what a Brain Braintree's paying. Um, you know, for us to be paying $3 million, $3.1 million, and, you know, Braintree pays 842 and Lexington pays 750 um, And all we have are buses that are getting reduced and eliminated. So if, if people can just start to think about that, I'd like to have a, a conversation. If nothing comes of it, then nothing comes of it. But I think, I, I know I'd like to have the conversation so we can say to people, because it's been getting thrown, you know, a lot of people, I don't even tell them the assessment part of it, because then they'll really go, <laughs> pardon the pun, off to the third reel. Um, but uh, that's my new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure, sure. So Thank you, you to my colleagues. I'm sorry, I know I rambled. Oh, sure. Too much information. We can put that on the agenda for, um, for the next meeting. Because, uh, um, yeah, so. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> see, I look at Mr. Hearn. I need to the, say the your name. The real it's Mr. Like, Hearn. It's like he's yeah. just seating in the. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know what? Just, I think it's Mr. Grayley having some fun with the, my oh, two, three so colleagues too. to the right. Yeah. So thank you, Mr. Yeah. Grayley. Go ahead. He's so just so, just that. a very brief item. Um, as you know, I am this, uh, the representative of the select board to the uh, Affordable Housing Trust Board of Trustees. And uh, three days remain for Arlington residents to fill out the affordable housing survey. And I would encourage residents to do that. Just visit the town website and just search for affordable housing survey. and It'll come right up. Um, this will help the trust fund, which is just getting started, develop, an, develop our action plan, which really will guide the first five years of how we make uh, decisions about investing those resources. Uh, community engagement is really important, particularly uh, because the, the point of the survey is we're really hoping and working hard to hear from residents who are most likely to need or benefit from affordable housing and are typically underrepresented in public meetings. So members of the planning staff and of the board trustees have been out pounding the pavement literally on the sidewalk at farmers markets uh, with cards and whatnot, but uh, I was asked and gladly uh, gladly assented to giving a plug for it tonight. So once again, please do take the affordable housing survey before June, uh, this Thursday, June 30th, when the survey closes, and that's at um, arlington.ma.gov, arlingtonma.gov, and then just search for affordable housing survey. And I took the survey because I'm a resident. I encourage all my colleagues to do so as well. I think it's really thoughtful, and you'll see kind of the, the kind of work that the Board of Trustees is putting into it. It doesn't take long at all. I mean, and if you Thank do you. before the 30th, they won't have to extend it, and then you feel guilty about, right. <laughs> about not doing it over the holiday weekend. You know, <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just a couple of brief things. I just want to give a nod to the organizers, both from the town and the vendors at the beer garden, because if anyone's gone past there in the past couple of weeks, it is jammed. So it's been a wild success. I think they found a home there at the Jason Russell house mm -hmm. on the lawn there. And so if you haven't, check it out. Uh, it seems to be a hot spot. I've been busy with baseball, but that's wrapping up so I can check it out. Um, and then at, at long last, I went to Leader Bank today and I did not have to walk a, around construction yeah, fencing right. in Arlington Center. So you, if you go through Arlington Center, you can see the updated plaza with the new concrete. Oh, the nice yeah. uh, imprints of the bricks, and looks like we have a little, little uh, work to do to put in some of the planters and whatnot. But there's a lot of space now, and a lot of ideas in my head for outdoor music, which is always what I wanted to see in Arlington Center was a performance space, and I think we can figure that out with all the space mm. that we see there now. So check it out. It's now it makes Arlington Center much more appealing for the businesses there. Yeah, I got, I, I passed there Saturday and got some pictures, you know, so yeah, I, mean, I was like, kind of like, wow, I don't have to walk around, and it's kind of, it's kind of cool, and then I figured I'd get pictures while it's empty, because soon there are going to be tables and whatnot, and, you know, so, uh, so yeah, just a, a three quick items, I mean, um, so, um, it was on 
June 12th that we did the the Rainbow Commission mm -hmm. thing. And so Mrs. Yep. Mahan and, and Mr. Um, Helmuth were there, and 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 I'll, I, I I didn't mention this last time because I just forgot, you know. Uh, but um, I partly for the fun of it, and partly because the just the thought of me listening to myself read eleven clauses of whereas made me like bored, you know. I asked people um, to join in and reading it. I mean, so we found like 11 people to read the wares clauses. I mean, and, and uh, as a select board representative, I read the um, Be It Resolved. And it turned out to be a big hit, you know. So I just thought it was fun, but people kind of like raved that, you know, they really liked that. You know, and, and so I just put that out there as something to consider, you know, um, doing next time. And, and it just made it kind of like fun. I mean, it wasn't like I lined up people in advance, I mean, just like see who's there. Just ask them, you know, if they want to do it, and people are pretty much came for it. So it can be as easy as that. You know, the other thing is that we're going to have a forum on um, community insurance. You know, by the civic engagement group. I mean, this is breaking news because it hasn't been posted yet. But the goal is to do it. The intent, the strong intent, is to do it on the seventh of July, so Thursday, Thursday night. So Mr. Fisher is going to be heading that up. And finally. Um, uh, there, the Broadway Corridor Design Competition I mean, has concluded. We have a winner. Uh, uh, if you go to Bob Sprague's site, you can find out who that winner is. But if you don't know, I mean, then you'll see it on ACMI or you can watch it on YouTube. And, and is it you? Uh, no, I wasn't. No, it wasn't. It was, it was a team. That was like a very uh, no, he was coy really answer. Enough, wasn't he? <laughs> no, 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 if you no. really want to know. No, 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 no. no. If you don't know, now you know. Yeah, it, makes, it makes good reality TV, though. You know, uh, so this is, yeah, yeah. So the, the, the proposals were really quite nice. You know, so, so there's a high school, the, the Arlington High did, had a team. And, um, Winslow uh, Associates um, Architects had a team. And, and, and um, MIT uh, had a team. I mean, and there were some really good ideas that came out of it, which was the whole point of it. Because I mean, we, I mean, the the winning, the prize money was very token, you know. Uh, but, but um, anyway, so that's done. I mean, and uh, Mrs. Thornton, I mean, she persevered, you know, she got it done, and and so, so that's it. Um, Move to adjourn. Second. All right. So motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan and a second by the her. The H's. 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 The H's. Second by the H's. But, <laughs> Heard of Helmet. <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Jim is full.